Welcome back to Los Angeles 2119. This is Callisto 6. How are y'all doing tonight? Woo! Woo! Right. Woo! There ain't nobody. Elisa looks weird. There ain't nobody <laughs> who can deliver the eyebrow, like, the eyebrow, like, it, the, the raise that you that you deliver, Mark. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Yay! So, yes, uh, uh, Oya's out tonight, but we got a Mark. So that's all right, Mr. Mir. How are you doing? I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you back. <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, this is the first time I've, I've been joining you right from the beginning. I know. We get a little better every time you guest. We're like, damn, it took too long to get Mark in last time. Let's get him in in under two hours next time. <laughs> so I appreciate it. We're, we're going big this time. We're starting with you in. We're just going to start with Kotsky. Right okay. Okay. Um, okay, so some quick announcements real quick as we start off today's show. Of course, as always... Making season two of Callisto 6 possible. Thank you so much, Okie Dokie Dice, Woo! for sponsoring the show. Um, Okie Dokie Dice are available in all markets except North America, which they will be at the end of March. Soon. And yeah, really soon. Um, they've got all the different types of dice styles that you can want, so check them out at okidokidice.com and at Okie Dice on social media on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course, a uh, huge thank you to all of our friends over at Monty Cook Games who have Yay. been big supporters of the show uh, since uh, season one. Thank you so much. Um, here's what I got for you. Um, this week, we're featuring Numenera. Explanation Eric can go can riff on. Oh, sorry. Should, um, yeah, so Numenera. What's a Numenera? <laughs> Darcy's rolling her eyes right Quick, now. Quick riff. Um, so a billion years set in the future. A new world grows in the bones of an ancient technology of prior worlds so advanced it all seems like magic. Seriously, Numenera is a rad setting. Um, if you guys don't have a group to play with at home um, for a Numenera campaign, I highly recommend uh, Tides of Numenera, uh, which is on the Torrent um, uh, RPG engine. The same thing that did, they did with Baldur's Gate and, and uh, uh, Torment the uh, Planescape game. Uh, it's really rad. I highly recommend it. Um, I got mine on Xbox. It's super cool. And it uses the cipher system as you play along. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Um, so there's a new dual core book, uh, of course, Discovery and Destiny. Um, but they have just announced, the big thing is, um, they just announced Arcana of the Ancients, which is a 5e compatible book of science fantasy. And I am so going to get the hell out of that book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam's having feelings over there. <laughs> yes. What do you mean? Basically. Why would I possibly have feelings that I would want to look under the hood of that thing and see? I, I know. I know. I know. I'm super excited about it. Um, of course, they also have um, an enormous campaign book called Slaves of the Machine God and the soon to be released Priests of Aeon, revealing uh, the mysteries of the Order of Truth. I, I can't tell you guys enough cool things about Numenera. So you can learn more about this stuff at MontyCookGames.com. Definitely, definitely check it out. It is a pretty rad system. Um, let's see, I have another quick announcement. Um, I'm gonna read this note that I got. I opened up, a, I got a package today, and unfortunately I can't show what I got because it's a, it's a branding thing, but uh, it, was, it was Harry Potter. <laughs> what? You got Harry Potter? Uh, they yeah. sent him wait, in the mail! Wait, wait, oh my gosh! What? Um, so they used children, the... send him home! He's not a kid anymore, he's got kids. Yeah, he's I, that's left... what I said, I said oh. he has children. children. Oh, he has, has oh, he does? Home. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna did, go feed him. Did they send him by owl? Did they send him by owl? Yeah, right. Don't feed him after midnight. <laughs> don't feed. Don't feed Harry Potter after midnight. <laughs> That's another fan. <laughs> Karen, <Yeah. laughs> so here's the note I got. It says, "Hi, Eric. Smile emoji." Um, you're part Scottish, so I thought I would get this for you. I was born in Scotland, and I've lived here my whole life, and I still have trouble reading this. Eric, the, Eric of the Strange. Uh, Eric of the Strange got me. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, but it's in Scots. I need to ah! read this. Those are my people too. I'm gonna see We're how far I can make it. Uh, well, let's, have to, let's see how far. So, just clarification on that before we move on. I'm I'm adopted into a Scottish family. I'm oh. Irish, but I'm adopted into the Campbells. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an Irish. So kinda, I'm a Scots Irish, so I'm kind of like my own worst enemy. I, pe I feel like. I mean, the Scots are their own worst enemy. That's but true. that can be said by a lot of people. I was born an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I've got the Canadians Scots over there laughing. Right now. We're the bad guys in everything. <laughs> I've got um, Irish citizenship, so. That's oh, do you? Yes. Yeah, so Dude, I'm oh. everyone's so impressed. Mm -hmm. wow, um, cool. You win. <laughs> yeah. You've got other stuff. Yeah. To, you, you got even more. There's, there's other impressive stuff about you. You've got a show, you've got you got a you got a show on Amazon. That's my good segue. Besides these passports, it's incredibly a generalized <laughs> thing to say. Passports. Mark me those things that are impressive about you. Mm. We don't know what I could be referencing. <laughs> 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 um, but a show on Amazon Prime. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, it's a show I co-created actually, and uh, what? I'm, I'm, yes, and I'm one of the writers and uh, one of the leads on it. It's called Tiny Plastic Man, and uh, recently all four seasons of that became available on Amazon. 
Prime in Canada, but also here in the United States and in the UK. Okay, this whole table just simultaneously subscribed. Yeah. All right. What? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, a Tiny Plastic Men is the name of the show. So you want to look Oh, that man. Up. Amazing. Tiny Plastic Men on Amazon Prime. Check that out. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's about well. uh, some guys that work as toy testers, at, uh, <laughs> prototype testers at a toy factory. And most of the toys they test are inappropriate for children, radioactive, cursed, uh, what have you. Oh my Thanks god, this sounds amazing. That's such a great <laughs> premise. Right? Oh man, that's good. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> if Toy Story is written by adults, from the other perspective. Uh-huh. Um, I wish I'd thought of that. Uh, do we have any other announcements you guys want to get out there? Uh, yeah, on behalf of Eliza, go watch uh, The Improvised Generation, Sunday mm -hmm. night, new show. I don't know if it's sold it's out. It. I have no idea if the tickets are sold out, but if you are in the Los Angeles area, or even if not, if you can afford a plane ticket to be here Sunday <laughs> night, Let's do it. you have no excuse. Go see The Improvised Generation. I'm going to be guesting at some point soon, but okay. not on Sunday, but soon. But go okay. see it because it's a brilliant show. That was my next question, yeah. Mm. Go, uh, yeah. I have another improv-related announcement. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm actually flying back to Canada tomorrow, more, or very early tomorrow morning, oh. Oh, much earlier than I like uh, because tomorrow night I'll be starting a run of improvised Dungeons and Dragons at Rapid Fire <gasps> Theater. Yay! And uh, we're out of the Citadel Theater, so if you happen to be in wait, Edmonton, wait, wait, wait. feel free to drop by. If you're you happen to be in Canada, make a long yeah. drive through the snow. And if you're in the States, well, book a flight. You're, you're in the Citadel Theater? The Citadel, yes. <laughs> it's my favorite theater on the Citadel. <laughs> oh my goodness. What's funny, Eric? <sighs> No, no, nothing, nothing. It's just a, a thing. Yeah. I just remembered a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, unless there's any other announcements. <laughs> this is, they're excited. Sam, is this true? <laughs> is this true, Sam? I mean, I didn't want to tell you. I thought you'd be ashamed of me. But... <laughs> I learned it from watching you, okay? <laughs> All no, right. No, that ain't half true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think with all of the zaniness out of the way, we are now ready to jump into tonight's episode of Callisto 6. Oh man, are we done with being zany? Yeah. I gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, police say the damage was minimal. The Callisto 6 had an unwelcome surprise this past week when what seemed to be a simple night on the town began to take a darker turn. The strange entity known as Tails emerged suddenly after staging a trap for Lacey, who was sifting through Pyramid Star Solutions database. They were looking for information on what Kylan Krauss has been up to since being reinstated as CEO of the company. After being pulled into the dark, Lacey's dangerous encounter with the entity leads to the discovery that Tails has been installing subliminal programming into the minds of users who enter the dark web. The chilling implication is that anyone could be infected by the terrifying creature from the dark. The encounter with Tails did reveal, however, a cryptic message that had been buried in a data cache right in plain sight at Pyramid Star and is addressed to Lacey. Could it be a trap or something of vital importance? There may be only one way to find out. Until then, however, I'm Hakeem Sophia. Rest easy, Los Angeles. Well, yes. <laughs> heck of a recap. We had a pretty interesting encounter in the previous episode of Callisto 6, running into the, dare I, dare I describe him as the demonic broken code that is known as Tails. Um, that being foremost in everyone's mind, because we are picking up where we left off, where you had just left Oya's cousin's house. Mm -hmm. um, Oya, of course, right now is keeping to herself in the transport. Everyone is dealing with the implications of the information that Lacey has revealed to them. This shattered computer code, the sapient thing that's moving throughout the dark, seems to have been, the, the implications is that it seems to have been implanting subliminal code into anybody who has entered the dark web. And of course, 
to enter the dark web in 2119, the only way to go dive under the code and into this world of psychic hallucination and interactivity with the computer world is by having an implant directly installed into your brain. It's very dangerous to do, but it also has, it's a high risk, high reward thing, and usually only the craziest of hackers do it. Um, luckily you have a, tele, a technopath that can just do it by taking a nap. <laughs> um, unfortunately, this means that there could be thousands and thousands of hackers out there that have been diving into the dark web and not even realizing that they've been having subliminal programming injected into their minds. Um, this was made very apparent when Oya's cousin, speaking with the voice of Tails, turned and looked at all of you and saw you all for the first time in real space. Um, thankfully, you were able to save Oya's cousin, but the, the impact of that terrifying moment, this being that's been lurking under the code and could be everywhere right now, because remember in Los Angeles 2119, the internet is connect, connected to all of us at all times. It's connected to the Oculus um, sensors and contact lenses. It's connected to your glasses. It's connected to everything. Everyone at all times is able to see the web if they so choose. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> unless, unless you're hops. Um, so it's entirely possible that this whole time there has been this thing lurking just behind the curtain of thousands of lines of hundreds and billions of lines of code. Um, waiting. Why Tails is doing this, it's kind of difficult to say. Motivation, not sure if you can trust what Tails is telling you, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem benign, <laughs> to be sure. It outright said it wants to know what it looks like when people die. Yeah, what was that about? Not cool. um, and it also revealed that it seems to know something about the entity known as Fletcher Cross and seems to be somehow connected or at least interested in Fletcher. Um, right now, <laughs> right now, we're gonna start off on Amelia as y'all are touching down in the back area behind the house where uh, Kylan Prime, one of the clones that Fletcher created uh, years ago, has made his home. This is a very large, luxurious home in the Beverly Hills area. Um, this place, like most of Los Angeles, was rebuilt after the Great Cataclysm, um, but has still has that sort of classic um, mid 21st century feel to it. <laughs> so, or, uh, yeah. So it's it sort of dates back to styles that were reminiscent of 2070, um, which uh, was sort of an amalgamy of modern day settings and a very a very ostentatious, futuristic looking glossy metal. You know, typical, well, imagining what we in the 20, 21st century think the future was going to look like, mm -hmm. the mid 21st century kind of went a little overboard in doing that. <laughs> um, yeah, however, this is a pretty nice place. And as you are touching down in this large <clears throat> backyard area, it looks like the landscaping here has been uh, made, it's been flattened out, evened out from the hills that are around it. Um, probably has a lot to do with the fact that Fletcher, like some other people, enjoy accessibility and doesn't need all of that shit in his backyard. But it's just big enough for um, a few of the vehicles that he stores, as well as a landing pad for what you assume he might have some kind of aircraft, but it's perfect for you guys to be touching down right now in the back. Um, as Amelia sets down um, and the ramp begins to lower, Mendoza, who is with you, um, he steps up to the ramp and starts straightening his tie a little bit. And he goes, so, I'm um, just gonna ask, are you guys intending to tell KP about uh, your psychotic code friend? I mean, that's up to Lacey. Well, I'm gonna tell him what I can, but uh, if you wanna say something first, it might look better. I'm not psychotic. No, not you. The other one. The, I don't really know you that well, but I have it on authority that uh, you're not. <laughs> uh, does, does KP do a lot of dark web surfing? What, what do we say? Diving? Diving. Does he have an implant, one of those thingies? Uh, no, I don't think he has any. Okay, so on. that's good. Well, anyway, we can check it out here in a second. Um, 
But uh, why don't we go check out? Uh, why don't we go check out what KP has to say about the whole situation? And he's been wanting to connect with you all for a while. Sounds good. And there's the man himself. And as he's pointing, you see the doors to the back of the of the, uh, the backyard just open up, and you see Kylan Prime. An older virgin uh, of Fletcher. Uh, did that sound like virgin? Yeah, <laughs> you did. <laughs> An older virgin. <laughs> Weirdly specific. Hey, you know what? Sure. That's fine. Wait a It's totally fine. Ace is ace. Yeah. So he comes walking out. He is. He's had career goals. <laughs> it's true. He's, he's been. He's busy. had a lot. Of, he's had other things to to worry about. Right. Um. So <laughs> you see, you see, Ky- uh, Kylan comes stepping out into the backyard area onto the large uh, sort of platform that's right in front of the uh, the landing pad. Um, Kylan, of course, is decked out in impeccable, like business-styled clothing that looks quite comfortable. It looks like a, a more modern-day, like long-breasted jacket, like jacket coat. It's all the same color as Mendoza's. Very black. It has like nice, sleek gloss to it, and he's got a very fashionable metal cane. Um, that he's leaning heavily on as he steps out. Um, all intents and purposes, a very handsome silver fox of a man whose face has just lines of worry all over it. Mm. And it does seem to be enhanced by that and by upon sight of all of you disembarking from Amelia. However, what really catches your eye is the cyborg that steps uh, out just behind him with his usual swagger um, and comes to a stop uh, right next to Kylan. Um, and Kylan leans over at you and he just says, you did good work getting them out alive. Thank you. I always try my best. And then he just motions to all of you. Hey, what's up, friend? <laughs> Hello, little tech friend. Hello, everyone. Good to see you all. Gosh, gee, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like that wasn't gonna come up first thing. Oh my yeah. god! I'm like, what? Uh, oh, you want he... to know? Oh my god! Yeah. Mark. Can what? What did we say? Implants. We said it, it's probably not oh. gonna happen. All right. So uh, that's the first a, thing that I that I thought of. I was like, um, uh, can do we you, scan him? Do you need a difficulty? Do you need to make it? Do you need to make a difficulty six roll? Uh, the <laughs> presents are. I mean, what I you, need to roll is he has got an implant. You. Yes. He oh, um. Oh. Uh. If that's the difficulty of the roll, I will make the difficulty of the roll depending on what goes into it. Um. Um, so this is like, uh, this is not coding. Unless unless you want to use this specifically to try to scan Kotsuchi to find out if there is a trace of tails. Is that I mean, so that would be the 10 check. Uh, yeah. If the implant is present or absent. Like, no, the implant you said was present. Yeah, it's uh, to so, find yeah, out if- No, nope, I need to do the big check then. All right. Okay, cool. Um, big check. Both skills. Um, you said coding does not go into it. Uh, no, coding would go into it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll get that. All right. Uh, so that's all three of my power shifts. Um, uh, do I get to? I'm um, using devices for this. Oh, now you can. See babies. Now? Yes, you could okay. use a device for this. Um, and I've historically used my wrist computer on this check as well. Uh huh. Cool. Um, and then so that gets me to seven. Um. So let's kick in a level of effort and uh, roll at difficulty one. So you need three or better. This won't hurt at all. Oh, gosh, gee. Eight. Woo! Okay. Very well. Shall I describe? <laughs> what the, yes, I, I think you should. What the experience. Yes, yes. What's I, I hand it off to you. Uh, Very well. So oh, I'm excited. You do detect an implant. In fact, you detect that upwards of 30% of Kashchi's brain is non-organic. Probing deeper, you receive both visual and auditory input. The visual input is of a man, I'm not sure how familiar Lacey is with the fashions of the 1970s, but it's a man dressed in what looks like ancient clothing with with wide lapels uh, and uh, sort of a very shaggy haircut, strolling in front of a multicolored background and singing, and he is singing the following song. (laughs) And this sort of repeats in a loop. Please tell me you broadcasted that to all of us. Just kidding. Lacey, this fills your head. (laughs) 
you are being dosed with the Trollolo song without even realizing it. <laughs> yeah. it, it is filling your consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just want to point out that, Lacey, you are very vaguely aware that even though you've gained access to Kashi, mm -hmm. you basically tripped a device that feedback loops anybody who's trying to access anything internal in Kashi, which is gratifying because it means it's very unlikely that he's got any kind of code from Tails in him. The bad news is, is you actually can't make out anything that's inside that man's head uh, because you're just hearing la 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 I would never try on purpose. I promise not to sure. hack costume. That was already established. But you're not, but you're, I, yeah. Nah, eh, mm, mm, <laughs> ah. Lacey, what are you humming? I assume <laughs> I am aware of this attempt, yes? Um, I would say, I would, I would say it does have the familiar tickle of someone who is mm -hmm. uh, snooping around. It's, the, 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 the tricky part is, is that with Lacey, it's not always easy to tell that it's being done. <laughs> um, yes, but no, having read the dossier, I might have an inkling. Probably. I, I don't think it's a huge stretch, yeah. Okay, Kashchi will nod to you. <laughs> uh, sorry for that. Uh, typical uh, precaution. Eh? It's nice to see someone who actually employs countermeasures. <laughs> <laughs> so I do. The security I've seen. Is your car here? Oh, uh, yes, it's around back. Hmm. We didn't park on it, did we? No, no, no. It's, okay. uh, it's just fine. I would have known. <laughs> I guess that's true. Are you okay? You got shot. <laughs> oh, which time? Uh, what? Kylan, which time? I get shot all the time. Kylan speaks up and what? says, if I can be honest, I think I'd be more worried about the bullet safety than cottages. Uh, if we have a moment, I would like to talk to you all inside and maybe catch up on Events. <laughs> I haven't spoken with you since the boat. I died. Yes. I am I, glad to see you are uh, looking better than last time I see you. Oh, yeah, thank you. They told me you helped. I wasn't really uh, conscious I'm sorry. for it. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I feel great. Shh, she's doing better. I'm fine. I can, and then the whole, there was like a whole sleep thing and Lacey took care of that too. So I'm right as rain. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Well, if we can go inside, Cobalt's going to be very sad he missed you all. Oh, hey. dang it. <laughs> I was hoping he'd be here. Um, and he leads you into, of course, uh, again, uh, Kylan's, the inner parts of his house is very, it does have a familiar feeling of Pyramid Star. It seems like there's just a taste for the past in the Kylan Krauss line. Because as you walk in, the glossy marble floors are decorated with stands and images and statues uh, from early to mid human history, as well as some of the, the technological gadgets um, from the birth of technology. Um, a few like old typewriters, as well as like the first, and I do mean the first Atari. <laughs> yes. Uh, to come off of a production line. Like all like little things like that, little knickknacks of like tech that have been gathered and put together, priceless artifacts. Um, and he walks into the room and makes his way over to the grand piano. And you can tell he's already a little winded as he sits down on the stool and then motions to everybody to take a seat on these plush leather sofas that are all just splayed out in front of him in this big, glossy, somewhat sterile and imperialistic looking living room area. I sit um, on the couch and I put my feet up. Okay, cool. You kick your feet up. Um, Kylan sort of situates in and uh, says, Kotsuji, that's the chair that can support you if you wish to sit. Oh, thank you. Um, and you move over to this, what looks like a studded iron chair um, <laughs> as Kashi takes a seat. Um, you can tell that it's made out of synthetic weaves and whatnot of the time, but there is a distinctive like groaning of, of, of metal as this gentleman who, as you all know, is more than what he seems, looking like a normal human being on the outside, for the most part, takes a seat and this, the weight of his body causes the chair to buckle a little as he sits into it. Um, I still sit down slowly, even okay. though I have, just, told, just I have been told it. a chair will support me before, and then <laughs> it does not. <laughs> so Kylan takes a seat and just says, You will all be happy to know that LA has not fallen apart since Measure Z passed. Surprisingly enough, it would seem that the corporations and the local governments are actually working quite well together, which alarms me. Mm -hmm. 
It's not in my nature to be comfortable when I see people in power making moves in a cooperative fashion. I knew I liked you. <laughs> Let's talk about my counterpart. I would like to know what the strategy was when you installed the other Kylan Kraus back into Pyramid Star. We didn't really have an alternate plan. Uh... I mean, what else were we going to do with him? Well, I don't know exactly what the answer to that is, but putting him back on the throne certainly wasn't the first thing that came to my mind. Well, it's not really a throne so much as it is kind of a crumbling and, and child-locked um, babysitting position. Um, Mendoza speaks up at that point. He pops a piece of gum in his mouth and he's like, it's true, boss. He hasn't done anything since he got back in there. I've been having, sur I've been having him surveilled. I mean, he can't really do anything anyway, right? No. And Lacey and I were there in the meeting when we met the other heads and... You see him stiffen of... a little bit and he says, you met the other CEOs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that meeting like? Who did you speak to? Doris is kind of cool. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, pretty much only one of them seemed too calm in like the jumpy, bad way. Which one was that? The lady. Um, I mean, uh, both Doctor Ron and uh, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there, Gabriella. Help me. I'm I'm trying to help you. I'm helping you, Gabriella. I know, but I don't want to like. Was it what I expect? Oh, Ran. Yeah, so Ran and Alanis. There we go. Both of them were kind of happy. Yeah. And Daris. Or one of them was calm. Ron was calm. Uh, Ron was calm in a bad way. Put a hit out on him, but he's not dead, right? He's not dead. Is he dead? Mm, no, the Kylan clone is still alive, from, at least from the last I heard. But it's hard to say. With Oniko still out on the streets, it's entirely possible that uh, Kylan is laying in a puddle of his own blood right now. Wow, it really has been a long time since we've checked in with you. Yeah. Why? What's happened? Oh, nothing. Only feels great. I'm She's lovely. Sorry. He, he, for the first time, you hear Kylan's voice kind of peak. I'm just going to keep calling him KP for now. Sure, yeah. KP. KP's voice kind of peaks a little bit, and he says, "I'm sorry." Yeah. She's great. She's all. She's all good. She's learning. She's um. Rest assured. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We've neutralized that threat. Oh, that sounds. That sounds. He kind of leans back, and you hear a piano key. Ding as he kind of leans back against the piano for a second and regards all of you. Um, Mendoza's like, that's what they told me too. I didn't know what to make of it. I didn't know that they were raising her. Um, Look, I hate the whole Kylan plan, but it's actually better than the complete non-other plans that we had. And he super owes us and all those people are jerks. So if they take each other down, then that's basically fine. But it does seem to kind of be working. Hmm. Yeah. We intended to avoid a power vacuum. Yeah. It seems like they're all kind of at a standstill and they don't really know what to do and no one knows what to do. And Picture a, a, a multitude of diseases trying to attack your body at the same time, but then they all get stuck in the doorway so they can't actually get through and be effective. It's like- Ah, uh, yes, I know this analogy. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Kylan, he, uh, KP, he just kind of nods for a second and says, I, I think I see your logic, yes. I don't get it. I mean, the ultimate goal, of course, is Fletcher. Yeah. I suppose if we've removed, if, if, if Kylan no longer has the favor of Fletcher, then he's not as serious of a threat as he used to be. Exactly. And I like Definitely. to think it might confuse or frustrate Fletcher, especially now that we've taken Oniko off the table. Frustrated or confused? Yeah, it, yeah, is Fletcher capable of frustration or confusion? Again, I've... He seems to throw tantrums, so probably. Well, that might just be like intrinsic to his nature, but I just, that doesn't necessarily mean he's capable of being But well, there's off. nothing we can't figure out how to piss off. That is true. KP just nods. That is very true, Cass. So Mendoza said that you wanted to see us. Why? I wanted to share with you some information I've been getting in ever since the vote passed. You've all been quite busy. 
I've been having my ears to the ground trying to track everything that's happening. I have learned in the past few weeks that there is a shadow player in the game, as they say. And I don't know the full nature, but I believe whoever it was was behind the detonation of the last remaining Callisto-6 energy at the train tracks that night. How did you find out about them? I have my sources. Yeah. How did you find out about them? I have my sources, Lacey. But how did Right, you that's their question. Lacey, I don't think he's gonna I, I answer think, your question. I think they want to know what your sources are. Yeah, to, you know. Sorry, I'm not being clear. I'm trying to be polite. I have no intention of telling anyone my sources. Uh, oh. I got that, I got that. <laughs> Thank you, Kotsji. Is it him? Oh. Are you Most a source? of them are him, yes, but. Cool. <laughs> Sometimes I am a source. Guest. Mendoza goes, I think these guys can actually tell you. I think they can tell you a little bit more about the shadow player. Yeah. Maybe we don't want to tell you our sources. Then don't. Wait, Wait what? Who's the shadow no, player? It just seems mean. We're just, well, we're just you don't have to divulge source. You can just give information, yes? Yeah. Okay, right. yeah. Um, I guess we should hear more from you before we share any information. All right. What can you tell us about this shadow player? No, you show them yours and they will show you theirs. Oh my god. Yes. Or what? Information. Sources. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, like, it's an analogy that used you to You show us your hand, we'll show you ours type of thing. refer to private parts on people's bodies. What? No, 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 no. Yeah. Hilton, get right. your mind out of the gutter. No, I know, but I'm saying that's what. And does a have an aspirin, please? Used to mean, and then now Two, this has really evolved. Expensive tea. Oh, oh yeah. Tea. And hmm. he looks back at you all and says, "The information I was able to uncover is that the power source was in transit. It was going to be set up at an unknown location, and from there, there was a plan to lure you all to that location and try to imprison you." Mm, yeah. The trap was sprung early, mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before it was shipped. Right. Well, whoever did it had, I assumed from the beginning that it must have been Lacey, mm -hmm. but whoever did it was able to breach the Pyramid Star security codes mm -hmm. like they were nothing and set off an explosion. Yeah. And now there have been a total of 34 reports coming in from across the city that people are, certain people have been exhibiting signs of unusual behavior and ability. Hey, a uh, real quick question. Ooh. Does Cobalt ever go on the dark web? Oh, God. No. Okay, just joking. No, no, no. Is that connected somehow? Yes. <clears throat> Is that how the Shadow Player gained entrance into the Pyramid Star database in order to cause that explosion? So, I've told you everything I know. What do you know? Team meeting, would you excuse us a moment, please? Could you and Mendoza uh, just give us a quick second? I'd hoped we were past this. Mendoza says, sir, I, I don't mind. We can... And just can do a quick group huddle, just to, just to... KP stands up and says, very well. Kostji, would you follow me? Yeah, I, I don't trust, you probably could hear us from a mile away or something, so you could just. So I should go two miles away? Or just no, enough no, to just, where, you know. I will just not listen. Yeah. That works. Oh. I will just do that. We don't hack each other, thanks. Do you have some vodka around here? Yes, of course. Good. Um, you can follow him in. <laughs> the three of you walk out of the room. Um, a few moments pass when you can hear the footsteps disappearing down the hall and the distinct sound of doors opening and a refrigerator door opening. Um, and y'all have the room to yourselves for a moment. All right, retract your ear. I think we're safe. Okay, we should have gone over this in the uh, in Amelia on the way over, but Mendoza was with us, so. <laughs> we're really bad at this. Yes. Right. Rusty is keeping his promise and is not listening. Okay. <laughs> Though he could. Good. Okay. All right. What the hell are we gonna do? I think we should just tell the truth. Yeah? I mean, literally, he didn't give us, he gave us one piece of information we didn't know already. That's true. So like, 
He's a little behind. And maybe if we told him some more up-to-date information, he could help us. And it's not at my this fault. point, he doesn't leave what's the point of lying? Because, you know, we need more people on our team that have more access to tech things so that Lacey can nap. I would very much Did like he, for Nate Lacey to have a nap. I would agree with that. Yeah. And he's yeah, being not surprisingly it. cool about CEO He's Kyle. being very cool. We and know the, what the happens when thing some of us weird, don't nap, so we need to make sure that Lacey naps. Exactly. So I think, I mean, I think the source this thing is maybe just like a result of constantly making power moves, blah, blah, blah. I'm really but whatever, tired of it too. I'm really why don't tired we just, of it too. exactly, so at how about... Point, if we were being targeted for somebody to kill us, they would have killed us all. And he also wouldn't have left us polite messages for about two weeks. That's true. Yeah. So, 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 okay, maybe I got a little carried away. That's okay, no, it's fine. No, it's okay. Yeah. He was, he but also, I literally can't explain why there's an internet monster taking right. people's yeah, brains. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'm not going to be super. It's right, same. I'm not holding out on him now. I just, yeah. I what? Yeah. yeah. I feel like Lacey, you're kind of taking point out of this combo, but we've got your back. And if you need help with anything, we will definitely chime in with what we saw. Captain Lacey, hey, for this mission. I can definitely help a lot. Is secret meeting over yet? <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh. Vomit something. information? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna right. test, I'm going to test something. Yeah? Gosh, you're my friend. I'll see if A few moments that. later, they all come walking <laughs> back in. Kashi has a glass of vodka and a bottle of vodka. <laughs> hey, Kashi, what do you think Anton thinks of you? Hmm? I don't know. Anton, we are friends, yes? <laughs> I think you passed my test. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was test. I passed. Yes. Yes. That's good. Uh, the heart emojis are probably popping up in chat right now. I pass okay. the test, I get the vodka, it's all good. <laughs> Everything is coming up Kashi. <laughs> it's coming up Kashi. <laughs> Very uh, nice. It needs to go on a shirt. <laughs> yes. Um, so everyone filters back into the room and gathers a few moments as everyone sits back and gets settled. Um, Kylan once again taking a seat on the piano stool and leans back a little bit and says, so we're still on the same side? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready for this? He glanced. <laughs> I just thank you. <laughs> Listen, what are you humming? Why do you keep the humming? Well, it was one thing, and then it was a different thing. Okay. I've been getting a lot, a lot of serious episodes lately. In my head. <laughs> yes. um, so, yeah. not so, at all, Eric. <laughs> for the purposes of time, um, Lacey exposits. Okay, you, mm -hmm. in, in, in true Lacey fashion, like a lightning bolt going to the nearest conductors, hey, leaping no. from piece of information to piece of information, <laughs> words relevant, branching off in a rapid fire of mm -hmm. relevant and somewhat irrelevant information to the conversation, but enlightening everybody exactly how computers work, and then moving back into how you got there, how you did it, and how easy it was, and how simple anybody could do it if they just did this, and guiding you back right into the end. So Lacey, for the purpose of extrapolation, KP listens to you mesmerized for almost a full eight minutes. And as you take the floor and basically fill Kyle, uh, KP and Mendoza in on everything that's happened, no one interrupts you. Everyone just listens very patiently. And when you finish and there's a moment of silence, KP just says, <laughs> I... I was terrified because you're all so young and you had this thrown at you. Nobody asked for any of this. I was frightened for you because you were being dragged into this conspiracy. You had all of this power and you've done all of this without me at all. Uh, you didn't need me. Oh, don't feel bad. Your information was good too. I don't feel bad. I feel safer. I, uh... Why? Because you're getting it done. I'm... I was certain that I needed to guide you, but I've seen now how... I'm here to support you. I mean, support's um, good too, you know? We're, we're getting things done, but still getting a lot of things done to us, so I don't know about... The anyone else, but I would sure really like some guidance. Yeah, well. there's no handbook for this kind of thing, you know? If nothing else, I think we could use help getting the thing that Tails showed me that's in Pyramid Star. We don't know how to get it, and we've been into Pyramid Star 
various ways like twice now and we still haven't been able to get a couple things that I want well, and also everyone else. Being somewhat familiar with the inner workings of Pyramid Star, <clears throat> I think it's actually quite simple to get what the creature tales showed you. Whoever put whatever that is there very boldly decided to hide it in plain sight. And if I'm right, <sighs> Lacey, will you connect to the web and interface on the screen here? I think I might be able to help you find out what it is that the thing showed you and how to get to it. Um, I'd like to interface. Okay. Put up that, that video. <laughs> okay. So the wall, I mean, the, the wall is basically a huge media center. So the wall itself just immediately goes whoosh, and cuts cheap. Use, huh, there it is. Guy in a suit, nice like, sort of like a tan coloration all over the place. Obviously looks from the 70s and he's belting out la 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 la. What the hell? <laughs> Have I been drinking vodka? <laughs> yeah, what? KP just kind of says, I don't know what this is. Oh, uh, it is a subroutine that prevents, you know what, it's log story. It's uh, log can story. we turn this off, please? Please. I, <laughs> <not mind. laughs> I do the turning off or you turn it up first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see how that would be a deterrent, yes. <laughs> All right, and then at that point, it just sort of wipes, and you guys see an interface, the, tip, the standard interface that people get when they want to surf across the, uh, the web, essentially, the interactive mm -hmm. web. Um, it doesn't take you guys long as Lacey, their brain just working. <laughs> you just see the directories come up for Pyramid Star Solutions. It's essentially the gateway, the public gateway to Pyramid Star. Um, KP's looking at it and just saying, all right. To the best of your ability, take me through the code that you saw, what you think was revealed to you, anything you can do to reenact or, or um, think of it like when police need a, uh, like a sketch of a perpetrator. Mm. Most people draw celebrities or people that they know. They don't actually draw the perpetrator. But you get the metaphor. Yeah, but the that's example. I mean. Matt I'm, Damon. Sorry. I'm asking you to reenact or recreate as best to your ability what I mean, you saw. So, can I try that? <laughs> um, yes. It's, it's, I mean, it's a big, vague ask he's, he's asking you to make. Um, I think. <laughs> but, Lacey, your, your brain does work like a living computer at this point. So, it's kind of like trying to... It is gonna be like sifting through a bunch of photographs to find out if you recognize the spot that you're looking for kind of thing. I'm also um, not, as established, a very strongly visual person. And so okay. representing that little amber thing is not necessarily my balawick the way it might be Oyas. So let me put it this way, because at least you would know this. The representation of that amber, like that glowing amber seed that yeah. you saw, was how the dark manifested what Tails was showing. And you. so recreating it technically would require a sense of uh, using Code. 3D, well, 3D design like Oya uses, basically. Well, let me put it a different way. In the sense that you're using it now on the surface web, it's essentially going to be trying to 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 find a snapshot that is familiar of of the coding of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in this case, it is more of like, Tails showed you a picture of Bigfoot, now you're looking for footprints kind of thing. Yes. Though also the picture is important. Uh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> um, but Oya, well, Oya would be here. Oya's yeah. been doing what Oya does, Oya which Oya is very quietly like listening and analyzing all of this. Mm -hmm. So Oya steps up and she says, do you want me to help where I can? Please. What? I mean, please. <laughs> Um, do you have like um, like a set or anything I can use to sort of, and and KP goes, uh, yes, of course. 
and moves over. Comes back for a, f a few moments later, uh, Mendoza carrying um, what looks like those sophisticated glasses. One of the newer brands that slide down over your eyes and basically immerse you. Um, your mother would kill for these hops. Uh, I'm not buying them. I'm not buying her anything technology right now. No. Um, with, with hands them over to Oya, there. and Oya, Oya looks at him for a second and says, I missed this, and slides them over her eyes um, and puts the sensor nodes on her fingertips and begins to immediately um, says, all right, I'll just try to interpret what you're seeing and build off of that, and I think I can, I think I can work with that. Okay, yeah. Um, so Lacey and Oya, you two start going to work, um, and you watch the code begin to sort of bleed away from the screen up in front of you. It kind of like sort of starts sliding down off the screen, and you start seeing the inner workings, most of which actually look quite boring compared to the vibrant, beautiful displays that are meant to dazzle the mind and eyes and sort of make you kind of like, oh, yeah, get you kind of, you know, in that zone where you're just not even paying attention, you're just swiping left or right. Um, however. <laughs> Math is beautiful. <laughs> um, Your that's, brains that's, are cool. That's how deep Lacey goes into the coding they can hear the GM describing it uh -huh. <laughs> and is getting offended. <laughs> so um, as this is happening, you're watching it kind of break down. It doesn't, it, 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 it's first, it just looks like, if you can imagine, the matrix code just kind of drifting down, except for infinitely more complex as you're going through um, a much more visual representation. It's not, it's not a subtle metaphorical line of code. You're actually sifting through all of these lines of code and they start to take shape a little bit. You start seeing directories and whatnot come up in a representational form of like orbs that are kind of like floating in the air and that are connecting to each other, representing like different spots of data that Lacey is jumping to. And Oya is literally taking what, da what Lacey is doing and interpreting as Lacey moves through and categorizing it into like shapes so that they can be understood for what they are in a visual sense, set aside and moved on to the next one. And one is gonna take, I'm gonna say this is gonna be a really tricky role. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, <coughs> go ahead. I'm going to set the difficulty at 10. Hops takes a nap. But you're going to get an automatic <laughs> asset from um, Oya helping you. I'm probably maxed out. I think you probably are. So, in that it's case. Computer and sweet baby, uh, then, freezing devices. Okay, so in that case, let's go ahead and get, let Oya give you a plus one to the roll. Okay, great. So, uh, the difficulty is 10. Yep, yeah, 30. Is 10. Dropping it down. Sure. Um, That's amazing. We need hacking music. I'll uh, yeah. expend another two points of effort and roll at one. It's crazy. Okay. Uh, on top of the free level of effort I get from my edge and all of the previous things that applied before applying. Okay. Go ahead and make your roll. Three. Ooh. Plus one from Oya's so four. four. Wow. Wow. After you, all of that, you, you three, basically right? just yeah, hurt the edges better. of failure. Um, Yikes. Okay, Lacey. Huh. Um, so even with the speed of your mind and your enhanced telepathic like abilities interfacing with the technology and Oya's help, this is taking some time. Yeah. Um, but together, Oya and Lacey are painting a picture here. And it is becoming gradually a little more familiar to you, Lacey. There are certain aspects that Oya is interpreting based off of the code that you're feeding and going through that are starting to look somewhat familiar to you. Um, literally, it's like Lacey's constantly grabbing, this might be the right clay, and then Oya shapes it and says, was this it? And then y'all are kind of moving through as you sift through the database until you finally reach a gateway that leads to um, level five security clearance, which in the case of Pyramid Star is actually the lowest level. Um, level one, if you remember, being the highest. So um, I'm not even gonna have you roll. <laughs> Essentially, you open that gate pretty quickly without even tripping the sensors and move into what looks like um, employee access. Mm -hmm. um, this is, anybody can access this part of Pyramid Star from janitorial staff to front desk to um, entry level uh, coders. Timesheets are kept here. Yes. Please agree to this policy, all that good stuff. Yes, indeed. Um, and you're sifting through and sifting through. And now at this point, you have, you have infiltrated Pyramid Star's um, easiest accessible security clearance and mm -hmm. codes and whatnot. As you're sifting through this code, um, you do see a lot of the countermeasure programs, the sentinels that you saw once when you were entering through the dark web, the ones that are very dangerous because of how numerous they are, yeah. they would be dangerous to you even at your skill level because there's 
thousands of them stationed all along these representational hallways as you're moving through these tunnels of code. Um, none of them react to you. Your entry in here has been so subtle that it doesn't look like any of these sentinels, which are essentially these humanoid looking um, sort of from what you guys are actually being able to see up on the screen, because it's almost like getting a snapshot of the of what the camera would look like if it was Lacey's brain moving through all of these codes, is you see what essentially looks like a, a formless humanoid figure that stands close to 14 feet tall, uh, lining hallways of code. Um, they don't have anything specifically featured about them, but there is something in just innately menacing about them. And Lacey moves through them very respectfully and very cautiously, and is not alerting any of them. They're just kind of standing there on guard. Um, but it is surreal to watch um, what Lacey probably sees every single time they go into the code. Um, with the roll that you got, it's enough. You come across an area of the database that starts seeming very familiar. Um, and Kylan, or KP I should say, speaks up at this point and goes, wait, Check here. Why do you say that? Because this is the most, of all the things on the entry level that you are, you are coding through, what you are looking right now, I guarantee you, is the most obvious place. Okay. Oya looks at you through the glasses and you can see their form digitally just enhanced, like moving towards it, looks at you and she just says, should I just do it? Um, Typically, we re we let Lacey make the decisions here on computer matters and thumbs over to you. And KP just says, no, no, no. I trust my instincts on this. OK. Yeah. All right, so you, you open up a curtain of code and in front of you is all these data packets, um, about 200 of them. And immediately, it's not, it's not a secret as to what they are, but all 200 of these data packets, they're all employee handbooks. And introductory, like, entry-level handbooks on, like, welcome to Pyramid Star Solutions. So you've joined the tech team of the future, kind of like handbooks that they give to new hires and stuff that like that. That was where she hid it. And KP just says, I bet you anything, it's somewhere in here. Um, I remember seeing a policy manual. That's true, you did. Um, all right, so this is gonna be a very, this is, Lacey, this is gonna be looking for a needle in a haystack. Where the needle has wrapped around it a message for Lacey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm Difficulty's <laughs> because apparently then built for me. All right. Um, How big is that message, though? This is, this is a needle we're talking it about. Glowing too? It was it glowing, too? It was glowing? It was glowing in tails. In the, in the dark, it was represented by a glowing, like, seed. Got it. It was, like, mm. amber-colored. Um, I didn't know if but, Tails is doing it or Dr. Patel's doing. <laughs> um, it, it does have... How uh, big is this haystack? But Lacey's right. It is... It, it, apparently, it's a message. Yeah. So... I'm going to start pacing around in the back of the room. Okay. I can't tell if this is dangerous. I don't like the look of those guys in the hallway. I don't want anything to happen to Oya. I can't handle anything happening to Lacey. And I'm not saying any of that out loud, but I am pacing around. I'm okay. going to pace with you. I'm <laughs> way no too idea. close to the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Question, yeah. is there any way Kashchi could lend the computing power of his non-organic brain components to help lower difficulty? <clears throat> um. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I think at this point, I think at this point we're completely maxed out with Oya and all of your stuff. I will you can add drinking, more pluses. I will just drink vodka, it's all right. We have vodka? Yeah. I have yeah. <laughs> I will give me. Too, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're all drinking now. There we're all freaking Morale pressed. officer, vodka. All right, um, go ahead and make you your go. roll, Thank Lacey. You. Okay. Um, um, difficulty is 10. Does everything go into it? Uh, yeah, with Oya's help too. Coding is gonna be particularly important here because you're literally looking for a specialized line of code that's been embedded in code. All right, in, code. Um, in that case, let's expend four points of effort uh, so that it will just go through because this is important. Okay. Okay. Burn the effort. Yep. Um, you stop at an entry level employee handbook for a computer programming. Um, <laughs> this is definitely for me. Yeah. I love how we actually passed one. Um, 
there is a small line of code in here uh, as you just scan through and you stop for a second and look back at it, there's a small line of code that is incredibly complex <clears throat> and seems to have no purpose at all. If this were to manifest in uh, like a, a PDF format, it would look like a glitch on the screen. But here in the lines of code, this is something that is easily on the same scale as what you're capable of. The code is looping and infinitely complex. It is definitely what you're looking for. Does it look like any of the coding, the weird code that I've recently become familiar with because I've been looking at a lot of strange architecture lately? It does not seem to be a trap from Tails. It doesn't have that. No, but I did also see uh, the... Oh, you're talking about your encounter with uh, when you were sifting around? On um, Right. Looking through uh, mm. Oniko's firmware and no. that mm -hmm. Good to know. Nope, nope. And I haven't seen the other person who would have very interesting high-level coding skills, so I don't know whether I would recognize that one yet. Um, actually, you do recognize this. Um, it's, it looks very, very familiar, and you don't know why. But you, you do recognize the coding itself. It just seems familiar somehow. But you can, as you approach it, as you approach it, um, it immediately activates as you reach out. It reacts to you immediately and it downloads. And you have it. Okay. Um, I'm going to pop that into, uh, like, onto physical media and onto something air gapped. Okay. <laughs> um, you basically. Which is incredibly easy considering you're doing it through your brain. So just you just pull it right out. Um, you can splash it up on a screen or wherever you want, but essentially it has no connection at this point. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the screen goes, powers down, and then reactivates into just like a blank screen that Lacey can act. <laughs> and okay. Oya pulls the glasses up and goes, Safety first. Sure. Was that it? Did we find it? I think so. We'll know in a minute. It's really pretty. What is it? See. Um, it reacts, and as you attempt to access it, Lacey, looking looking hard at this almost DNA-like, infinitely complex code, it unravels, almost like it's a di only almost like it recognizes you, and it goes, Shh, and you all see these words appear on the screen that read, "This message is for Lacey. <laughs> Lacey, getting this message means I failed. Go to the marked location as soon as you can. I'm sorry, I tried." And behind it is a digital code that looks like it's some kind of, uh, what you can imagine must be a combination to what might be a location, but needs to be decoded. Okay. Puzzles. Difficulty is 11. Okay. Um, uh, Oya has training. Okay. And, and puzzles. puzzles yeah. Uh, yeah. So if she can help me then, because she's trained, that lowers the difficulty. She can totally help you. And she just looks at this and goes, whoa. And slides the glasses back <laughs> on and goes, okay, wow. This is gonna, I'm definitely gonna need your help with this one, Lacey. You got this. We can do it. Collaboration. Collaboration. Do we have any panels on apple juice? I'm gonna go, chica. yeah. <laughs> you move out of the room. Mendoza just goes, Where's yeah. your kitchen? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's through here. Great. Um, you just hear, oh my God, this is a big kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so go ahead and make your roll. You can use Oya. Yep, so um, I can sit back down to 10 uh, from her help. And- uh, Biggest roll of the game so far. Is there anything, I'm sorry? This is the biggest, this is the biggest difficulty I've thrown at you guys so far. Mm -hmm. I know. Uh, but it's down a level of difficulty and do all of my things apply? Um, coding definitely applies. Yes, your assets would apply. Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad Lacey's doing this role. Mm -hmm. No one else gets a mm -hmm. good lower. Like, Lacey, right. like they this is what Cass does with punching, Lacey does with computers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you hear a food processor from the kitchen. <laughs> it's not enough to punch in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh. I'll take a recovery roll in a bit. Okay. This is getting kind of exhausting. <laughs> um, what's, what's your intellect at now? Um, I'm down to 12 from 24. Okay. Burning through it. Yep. Um, all right, so. This is exactly what got me into trouble last time. Um, it's fine. I'm sure I will experience no negative repercussions from <laughs> okay. I mean, these difficulties. Yeah. Um, but there's only so many chances. So do you need to roll? 
Uh, not a, not if I expend uh, three levels of effort. Okay, so you burn three levels of effort yeah, after you which get is it down. The four points to so get you it got down. it down to ten because of Oya helping you, which is like a specialization essentially, since she works in puzzles. Right, she has and the then, training that gets it down a level of difficulty, and then I can get myself the rest. So of the with way. Oya's help, you drop a twelve difficulty and burn three levels of effort and get it. Yeah. Um, 11 difficulty. You said it was 11, right? It was 11. Sorry, 11. Okay. That's Good. correct. I just yeah, want to make yeah. sure no, I you're right. So it was 11. Cool. Um, so, yes, coordinates pop up on the screen, which can immediately correlate to a map. Um, you see, it's it's <laughs> it's longitude and lat latitude. All right. Uh, coordinates that can be fed into a computer. Where? You see a globe appear on the screen and remarkably... You get zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and for a second, you guys think you're about to zoom into Los Angeles when it actually zooms into just outside Los Angeles and what is now left of the Big Bear Nature Reserve. Field trip. Field trip. KP goes, Ooh. what in the hell is this? Did you do it already? Who? They didn't have pineapple, this kiwi orange. Is there something else uh, you're not telling me? Who's leaving messages for Lacey in an employee handbook at Pyramid Star? I have a couple theories. Uh, we don't have enough, uh, more, da more data More data is required. Um, field trip. Um, trap? Anything could always be a trap, but this is a trap set by someone who very, very clearly wanted us to have it. No, 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 that person wanted you, you. to get that message, Lacey. Who was that? Uh, someone who's really good at coding. Um, the... Any ideas I have would probably be really out there and weird, and I kind of cut my eyes over to Oya. <laughs> uh, Oya just pulls the glasses up and goes, we are, I mean, that's what we do. Um, that's what we do. You said you saw future you, so maybe it was the thing from future me that future you brought back and embedded in a piece of code. Okay, there, oh, that was my Wait, how? hang on, we have future does, us now? What? Oh, this yeah, just seems very oh complicated God. for just directions. Uh, I mean, yeah, Mendoza kind of glances at you, Kotsuchi, and goes, this would have been insane a year ago, but it's still it's still absurd. insane. You get used to things very quickly in this line of work. KP stands up and says, "Kostya, I want you to go with him." No. I wouldn't mind. If it is a trap, as you say, maybe you can use some extra muscle. We still owe you for last time. Yeah. It's okay. I got paid for that. You're in. Hmm. I won't Ooh. die this time. Do you want the juice? I you don't you. even joke! I'm sorry, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. This is very intense. It's always good to joke about death. Mm -hmm. Taste it if you don't It's the Russian way. Okay. Is it? <laughs> cool. Nice. Okay. Pasiba, Paka, let's go. <laughs> Are we yeah, taking both cars? <laughs> What's that? Oh, shotgun! You can't call shotgun until you see the vehicle. That's the rule. You can't see the vehicle, you it's invisible. Ever see the vehicle. <laughs> That doesn't good count. No. It does count. Good you can't prove. Nope, that doesn't count. You can't <laughs> prove that the vehicle shotgun. is. You can have shotgun. Shotgun. Oh. I touch the person who owns the vehicle. That's not part of the rules. That's rule not how either. it works. That's he not, said it. He, he gets to make the rules for the invisible car. Yes, he does. Okay. Paul, you already missed out shotgun on Amelia. Sweet baby called it. <laughs> Field trip. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, so I have my invisible flying vehicle. I will just need to get my lasso of truth and my tiara, and we are ready to go. <laughs> I understood that reference. I didn't. That That's from not. a comic book. That's from comic books. Good job, good yeah. job. No, um, thank you, Lacey. Let me borrow your comics. Uh, you know your mission, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, he just looks at Mendoza and says, can I keep these? Is, is he using them? And he Mendoza goes, keep them. He's got more than one. And she goes, thank you. <laughs> and slides into her coat <laughs> and pulls off the sensors of her fingers and puts it in the pocket and just goes. Okay, so what's the mission? Uh go to the trap. Go to the go to the trap. Yeah. I don't I know like this mission. You're joking, but it's you the new go not? to the planet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you not say it that way though? I know you're just joking, but what's Maybe actually, go to the really ally. actually the plan though? What, there could what be a dope actually? cabin and we just have a nice weekend. Anton, would that be nice? I could have a nap. We could In all what have world? I'm gonna have a nap right now. In what world? In Los Angeles. Did you just roll for nap? I yes. mean, I get the one recovery roll as an action. Oh, so got it. I mean, oh, no, yes. I did. I did. <laughs> okay. Oh. Everybody oh, roll oh, for oh, nap. Who's captain? Who's Let's captain? Go. Not it. Not it. Not it. Not How not about Kashji? <laughs> I said not it. Yeah, he did say he not it. He said it last, I think. Probably. No. 
Captain uh, Luma. Luma hasn't say, said um, it yet. Oh yeah. You're taking point on this one. Oh, he goes. Oh I no, no, no. I've opted out happening. permanently. None of us. Sure. Are. Yeah. Great. Why not? I'm shotgun. Shotgun Luma. Let's go. First question, Captain. Can we get some apple pies and Julian on the way back? What? And Julian? What? Where? Mendoza, did you ever get me those aspirin? <laughs> Make yeah, them ibuprofen. Stop, stop, stop and Julian and get a oh, Julian oh, apple pie, a famous apple pie. <sighs> Yeah. Go to Big Bear and then go all the way on down. On the way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Because obviously we have to go there and then. Hey, if this ain't a trap, apple pies all around. All right. Please. Who's coming in the car? So who is with me besides Luma? Just Luma and me? I want to fly in the invisible car. Come on. What about you, Cass? I'll go with Oya and, the, yeah. and Amelia. Been there, done that. But thanks, Kashi. <laughs> all right, you and me, Hops. All right, let's go. <laughs> um. KP just says, please keep me notified. Don't disappear like last time. <laughs> no promises. Bye, KP! You got it. <laughs> um, Mendoza and KP watch you all load up into your vehicles. You guys part ways and go to the side of the house where your cloaked vehicle is parked. You guys I thank them. To Amelia. Uh, KP? Both of them, yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Please stay safe. Bye. Bye. Say out a cool boat for us. Uh, Mendoza just waves and, go, and says, I'm probably going to have to ask you for a raise, sir. Give him medical. <laughs> okay, now I go. Dental. <laughs> dental should be part. Castium leans in. 2119, dental Did you need medical there. insurance? <laughs> uh, um, all right, so um, okay. you all load up, mount up, as they say. Mm -hmm. I make room in the shotgun seat if Cast does actually want to sit shotgun. Okay. Uh, so we can share. They're small. Yeah, Sweet Ish. Baby is quite small, actually. Mm. Sweet Baby can easily. Sweet Baby can kind of like lap. ride cup holder. Mm. Um, yeah. So as you Not get in, like actual cup holder, but that like armrest space. Yeah, as you slide into this, this chair with put the belt across you, um, you immediately see this this greenish glow come out of Sweet Baby and says, "Hello, friend Cass." Hi. How's it going? I am well. How are you this evening, friend Cass? Relatively good. How dangerous is what you just did? Um, I mean, is seatbelts help? And Sweet is gonna be fine right there. It is true. Lacey entering the cockpit and sitting in this chair is not dangerous at all, Cass. <laughs> okay, let me be more specific. Were you and Oya in danger when you went into pyramid shit place? Yeah, on a scale of one to 10, what was it, like an 11? <laughs> um, that's not how those scales work, but mm. I don't, I thought going into a system that I had already gone through and installed my own access would be safe, and I don't know what's safe with any of my powers anymore. Fair uh, okay, so safety, meaningless concept. Great, I'm fine. <clears throat> All right, checks out. If there's ever anything to be punched, I know I'm really, really safe. Or anything that needs electrocuting. I'm not here, but sure. Um, that's, that's, oh, that's this, right. is a, this is a metaphor. Hops. And if there's something Hops. that's on the top shelf, I know who to call. Oh yeah, she's very tall. <laughs> I just, you and Oya keep going places we can't follow. And yeah. it's amazing, and you're amazing, yes. and it's fine. Oya and leans over, grabbing one of the seat, <laughs> like one of the belts that hangs off the side uh, of like the, the, the charity area. She's like holding on as the ship's getting ready to take off. And she goes, I just want to point out that I saw you jump 80 feet onto a transport that I couldn't go to. But that's me! It's totally different! It's pretty awesome. Oh, thanks. Um, and Amelia <laughs> rocks back and forth as you all begin to take airborne. There's this roaring sound. Um, and again, it doesn't take long before you all find yourselves flying over the dark city skyline of Los Angeles. <laughs> the, um, we were like cranking the stereo. And if oh, you yes, have uh, in car. Uh, so, so we have, we're accompanying them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. Kashi also, he puts on some music. It is a theme song with a vaguely Mediterranean, Middle Eastern feel to okay. it. Sort of a battle theme. Okay. Uh, before, as he is going, he reaches across the glove box, pulls out what is obviously a garrote, like with piano wire or some kind of thing. He's my lesser of truth, eh? Oh. Okay. Was, so. That's I'm kind of one of those, too. <laughs> Definitely. How many people has he killed with that? I, who knows? He's well, a, a gentleman doesn't say real is, numbers. Right. 
<laughs> I've seen those before. I know what they're for. <laughs> Luma, I don't think does. <laughs> how many weapons do you have stashed in this place? <laughs> oh, I Like, how many discount. pockets? Uh, where sunglasses go, here is knife. There's uh, all kinds of places, really. If you look under seat, you will probably find some. This is really? Like, this Luma, is like Furious and hunt. Mad Max. <laughs> They're just everywhere around. <laughs> yeah, cut, cut back to when I was riding in his car, eating a snack. Yeah. There's like a ninja like, star in my mouth. Like, Ow! <laughs> Pulling out a butterfly knife, like what the hell? Oh, that's why you didn't go this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. I just have the, the the like folded mirror down, and I have the, the the mirror open. I'm just looking at hops, just like this is great. Now I, you don't have to have the tech thing, so so I can talk to all of you. <laughs> what? You know, oh. the earpiece. Huh? How I can talk to everyone but you? Because you don't oh, have sure. anything. Oh, you're talking about the mirror. Technology. Right. Yeah. No, I meant no, 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 Hobbs. I meant because you're physically in the car with me. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand. I feel like, what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm slowly coming to terms with possibly getting one of those things, but I don't know what all this like tails think. You know, attaching people's heads and that's okay. Just okay. stick by me. Cool, cool. I'll do that. <laughs> if cool. anyone is hungry, I think there are some snakes around. But watch out for throwing star inside. Really? <laughs> I mean, it'll start looking for oh, the stars. Oh, you yeah. oh, would not suspect it when I reach in for a snack. <gasps> Throwing stars. <laughs> it's like darts 2.0. Hmm? I can never introduce you to my brothers. Why not? You would give them too many ideas. I see. This is the best car I've ever. So wait, we've made this official. So the scenario is, Kashi has an enemy combatant in his car. <laughs> Kashi then convinces that person to yes. let him have a bag of chips. <laughs> And then Kosti attacks. <laughs> That's the scenario that Kosti's like banking on. Oh, oh, I figured it was like that. Remember, like, you have the gun in the box of cereal? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was imagining. Or, like, yeah. any last request? Just a bo- just a thing of Lay's, man. That's Never accept rides from strangers. <laughs> especially Kosti's if you can. not a stranger. Especially if they're parking club. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you see. What do you think of Amelia's new paint job? It's nice. It's very nice. Yeah. When yeah. Uh, Kosti, it actually plays a little bit of havoc with your ocular sensors as you're looking at it because it's camoed up. It's gla- What is it? Glitter camo? Dazzle, dazzle, dazzle camo. Dazzle camo, yeah. Uh, hold on. Um, <laughs> ah, it's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the ride over the skylines of Los Angeles is just as beautiful and as peaceful as it ever is. You are starting to see a lot more sky cars now. It's now that the sky car lanes are not explicitly only for corporate use, mm. um, they are starting to build more lanes for people to use these aerial vehicles. Um, and so Los Angeles is starting to look more and more like a city of the future to you guys. Aside from the huge megaplexes and trillions of lights, you see glittering landscape that completely blot out the stars as y'all are leaving the city limits of Los Angeles, which remember in 2119 with 9 million people living here is roughly the size of New York. Um, it takes you a while to finally leave the city limits, but when you do, you start entering into that darkened space. When and out exactly here, do we cross that line? I would say it takes you about a good five minutes of flying at high speed. I just, I, cask, I get sort of increasingly fidgety as we approach that. And I'm like, where Cassie, is you the- okay? Yeah. I've never left Los Angeles. Really? Well, let me just go ahead and say that a city of this size, built on top of itself in a post-apocalyptic world, um, that is incredibly common. There's a lot of people that never even make it or need to make it out of the city limits. This is a huge, huge mm-hmm. mega city at this point. No vacation. The Anton absolutely would think it's weird. Yeah. Probably, no. yes, because you moved to LA, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. No trips, no vacations when you were a kid? I mean, nah, there's plenty of stuff to do in LA. Vacations are expensive. Well, yeah, I mean, not all vacations are expensive, but I guess, I, I guess, yeah, sure, if you're going to take time off of work and take your family and stuff. So you've never you've never left the city limits. I mean, not like a big deal, right? Hmm. No. Not a big deal, no. no, not a big deal. Hey, this is a big day for you. All right. Mm. Big step. Uh, <laughs> oh, Your sorry. arm kind of <laughs> <laughs> flattens a little bit. How does that hurt more than when I get shot with bullets? Cass <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. hits harder than mm-hmm. That's why. Um, it, it Tell me about this apple place. You don't have to actually do it. Well, <laughs> Julian, obviously, is a town uh, uh, south of, of of Big Bear in California, and it's famous for its apple pies. It's known for its Julian apple pies. They're, they're <laughs> I don't want to say world famous, maybe nation famous, state famous at least. 
Do they do we have open communication channel oh, yeah. in the vehicles? Mm -hmm. uh, Kashchi comes on the comm. It's like, when do we go get this apple pie I've heard about, even in Russia? I think it was after the trap. Oh, after. 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 Okay. Yeah. After. Yes. Trap and pie. Not Don't worry, actually we have trap. plenty it's... of snacks yes. around your vehicle. There is. To there is. You over. This, is mm -hmm. this is true. Oh, turn this up! And then I turn it up so it's. Oh my god. You guys can okay. hear it too. This is pure chaos. All right, enough yeah. of that. <laughs> um. So. Flying through the darkened skies as you begin to leave this this orb of light that is the mega city of Los Angeles behind you. Um, it's not too far outside of balance. Again, Los Angeles has grown dramatically <coughs> inward ever since the coastline of Southern California changed when an earthquake practically destroyed it. Um, but you do enter into a darkened area where the city lights have faded away. This Big, is weird. Big Bear has not changed that much since uh, Sea Day. Um, in, in all truth, it is relatively the same. Of uh, obviously upgraded and updated, but um, flying into this area of the Los Angeles mountains, um, it's just like it would look from an aerial view in present day. And for those who are not familiar with Big Bear in California, it is essentially a beautiful now ski resort town that is up in the mountains of California, um, about I say two hours from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, now. As y'all are starting to fly a little bit closer, you are seeing the big shadowy, ominous, ominous forms of the Los Angeles mountain peaks all around you. And the temperature, you're detecting the temperature drop as you get higher and higher up here. But you are noticing that there is still quite a lot of trees up here, mm. still living, still healthy. Um, and seeing them is a little jarring. It's kind of like, it's about, it's about the same scatter level as where it was around the Cassium Lab. Um, so lots of healthy growth out here, up in the mountaintops. Um, and the air up here is significantly cleaner. Um, hey and gosh, can I roll down the window? <laughs> yeah, of course, yes. Thank you. Yeah, so cold, fresh air oh. start to blast through the window. Um, but if you wanted to smell like pine in here, I have this little tree. I <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Watch out, that's a weapon. Dad used that, is a we ninja <laughs> that is a ninja star. That is a ninja star. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, this, this one is just smells like pine tree. <laughs> <laughs> Which he can turn into a weapon, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you it. are about a few minutes out from the location, and judging from where it's taking you, you are not in Big Bear proper. This is guiding you a little bit off the beaten path towards a thick patch of forest area. You don't see any signs of civilization where you're headed. Um, I have a question. Would I recognize anything out here? Because my dad used to take me out. No, uh, not up storm. here. No, yeah. not especially not at night. Oh yeah. It just it just looks very familiar in like a nature reserve kind of way. Like if you're looking at the treetops of any major forest in California. Cool. Um, but uh, <clears throat> what would you like to do? Do you want to set her down? Do you want to just go straight to the location? What's what? Do you have a plan of approach? Run recon? Yeah, maybe we should. There's no one can see. Do you. that. Yeah. How, where's the? Where, are we invisible right now? Oh, yeah. We are currently cloaked, yes. But they can see other vehicles, so it's not very sneaky. Oh. But how much cloaking does other vehicle have? None. None, None. but None. I know Lacey would You're appreciate looking at it. But what was the camouflage thing with the... So they have oh. they have, they have have a paint job on this on their ship that is essentially confuses people. It's when, hard to ah. hit and hard to pinpoint, but yeah. not hard to see. Yes, right. they would know something. It's hard there. for... Uh, they would also... They would also... I would also point out that your car is a small delivery device, whereas theirs is essentially, the way I've been describing it is it's very similar to the Pelican dropships in Halo. It's very large, it not, can house. Not so syrupy. Not so So we're like, so hang subtle. back if you guys want to run. Free. Yeah. Mm. Do I little... can do this if you like. It's up to Captain. Captain Luma. Oh yes, Captain Luma. <laughs> Shotgun Luma. Okay. I think that's a good idea. Until we can cloak our thing, um, <laughs> we <laughs> should do this first. Little reconnoiter, yes? Yeah. What's Good. the button that makes it invisible? Well, it is invisible now. No, I know, but what's the button? I just tell it to turn itself invisible. There's no button. Really? I am not, but you think I am a savage? What is going on? <laughs> Pressing buttons. I press buttons. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's just go down. 30% of your brain is not normal. Anyway. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> You're also a lacy. <laughs> Just heavier. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Guess keeps trying to figure out if she can throw him. Where we go? Not had a chance to figure that out. Yet. <laughs> um, we'll, well, um, let's not go directly to 
the coordinates. Let's like go like a little bit out. Like go and around then, it and, and coordinate like, adjacent. Like Intel or yeah, whatever. Coordinate right? adjacent. Okay, I'm going to turn down this loud music. We're gonna oh okay. man. <laughs> so, <laughs> stealthy. No, it's stealthy. All right, fine. So touching down, um, yeah. it's very tricky. Lots of branches, lots of high, tall trees here. You, it, they are, as, as I said, which is not unusual in, in one of the LA forests. It, it takes you a moment to find a good spot that you could set this car down, but you do end up hearing like the scraping sounds of heavy branches against the Ooh. side. Oh, I thought we were down. flying over to the coordinates. This is, right? oh. this, you guys are landing adjacent to the coordinates, correct? Yeah, I was gonna land. Oh, we're gonna land. Yeah, yeah we're gonna yes. land. So we can't see through treetops. That's true. You 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 make you, you make a bigger ruckus as you're coming down. The, the car isn't so much making noise itself, but the branches as you guys are moving through these woods. I'm getting definitely increasingly in, uncomfortable with every screech on the vehicle that is not belonging to me. <laughs> it's like nails. But after top. a few moments, mm. you touch down very softly. Okay. There we go. And uh, the car, all you see in front of you is this. So the infrared, the infrared screen up yeah. in front of you that is the windshield essentially. Okay. Cool. So you can see night night vision outside Ooh. the car right now. All right. Um, and so you see a forest. You see the glowing eyes of a raccoon scatter into the bush oh. as soon as y'all touch down. Huh? Yeah, it is the, the how you say trash panda. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Uh, don't worry about car. Uh, I have expenses covered and I am on job right now, so huh. it will be taken care of. I mean, technically, hey, we can't ruin an invisible paint job, right? Yes. <laughs> when it's uninvisible. Well, I'm just, okay. I just grabbed my staff and get out of the car. <laughs> Your new cool staff. Okay. I know, I just how, want to use How it. far away is adjacent? How far from you the tell target? Me. How, how far away did you guys want to park? Adjacent uh, is not difficult to do, it's just how far away did you want to park? I mean, it depends on what we started to, like, I would figure like a few hundred feet and like. Okay. Um, so the computer is, the, the pinpoint of where the computer is mm -hmm. at, um, you land a few hundred feet away from where you're slotted to go. Yeah. Um, you do, I would say getting out, of, I'm guessing you're getting out of the car. You're not seeing anything yeah. from sitting in the car. Um, before I get out of the car, I'm gonna do a quick uh, internet search of what um, Big Bear Rangers look like now. <laughs> Their uniforms. Big Bear Rangers? Yeah. Out here, they're actually mechanized. Big Bear Rangers are 24, 24 huh. 7 mechanized. Uh, yes. Um, so a lot of Big Bear Rangers are essentially what they do is they have stations all over Big Bear and they are, when, they, when they're recharging, mm -hmm. they're still on alert, but they just roam the areas. That's essentially. amazing. That's amazing for fire safety purposes huh. too. Like have firefighters out here be mechanized. At all As times. Can they be shaped like Smokey the Bear? As I imagine, can I make my skin look metal? Uh, um, no, probably not. We Would don't know that. I've made myself can, look monstrously sickly before. You can probably add a sheen to your skin. All right. But you're not gonna be able to adapt. What about the tier two? Oh, I know. Can she, can she That's make up her? I didn't know if that would like buy over and like use that. Oh, not quite in the intended purpose, but like you know. Mm -hmm. something Can you make that. your skin look like Got it now. A, yeah. Yeah. Okay. a person who's painted their skin to look like metal? What? Can you do that? Oh, like I a street mind. I can like absolutely a, like a, do that. Like a body painter, or what? like a, yeah, like yeah. a body painter. Yeah. But are they? But they're not like humanoids, looking like. They're, My skin they're like just the, starts they're like to the look security. Grayish and sickly, like, and then I doing? go, no, that is Sick not person. my color, <laughs> and I just uh, can activate. You, can you yeah. make yourself look like a, a bear wearing a hat and tie? Please. <laughs> holding a shovel or no shovel? No shovel. No shovel. I no, was shoveling. No, no, no shovel. Pick, holding a pick well, in the basket. Yes. 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 My last name is Orsini. <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> and I think really hard. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> Describe it. All of a sudden, <laughs> you just see a form start to grow and huh. it's dark. And then all of a sudden, fur grows and Lacey's gift to me activates and there's a top hat and tie. And I jokingly look at you and go, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Holy Huge. shit! I fall out of the car. What's happening? So, Is that okay? Um, 
when you look at your hands, Luma, they are paws with massive talons that are just <laughs> like arcing off to the side, and you topple out of the car. There is a large adult brown, well, black bear in a top hat and tie that topples out of the car. <laughs> um, the top it's hat got tie the, the, around, a little its, bit. around its face, it's got little tufts of pink around <laughs> uh, at the ends of the black. <laughs> Very realistic. <laughs> this is Sam reacting to the fan art they know they're going to be seeing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that is good. But okay. that is less a top was hat, that more like a... Was everything okay? Uh, 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 but put your paws down. Uh, put your paws uh, down. Um, so... Um, if I remember correctly, you cannot vocalize in these forms. Correct? Um, so as you're what? shouting, hop. Let me check. <laughs> yeah, that got. We were a little floored by the whole transformation. Uh, hey. I, I think hey. there, there is, a, there is a, a, a bear that sounds like it is on the edge of a rampage, roaring. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Like, okay. um, I think Lacey Bear is eating happen. them. Put us down. No, put us down. I, oh, I, I maintain the ability to talk. <laughs> 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 so Homeward you just bound care. four. <gasps> um, smarter than the average. Bear. Um, uh, I I don't know who can hear me on the sub vocals, but Luma is a talking bear. What? Oya comes uh, just stomping up and goes, "What did I just hear?" Luma's a talking bear. You're a talking bear, Luma. Luma. Lacey. It is my it is my fault. I am sorry. I make a joke. You turned her into a bear. Uh, Luma no. maybe. I don't think we're gonna be very stealthy with you as a giant bear in a top hat. Maybe you should like. You're in a top hat. Oh my god. Wait, what's happening? Uh, what I'll be honest. Happening? I was thinking less a top hat, more like a little green trilby or fedora. But. Oh my god. Uh, Is this really now the time to jump? You know, you're right. You're right. I, I blame myself. Who's, I blame whose myself. voice is that? Anton. Luma, what? The, what? Who is this? Um. I just sort of start standing a I little more my, delicately. As you stand, it's it's um, very difficult, Luma. I don't, your body is designed. You can stand. But your body is. Bears can stand. Bears can stand, bears can stand but but the weight distribution has completely no. changed. They stand like toddlers. <laughs> you are kind of like shifting around a little, kind of finding your knees again, um, and like. Who is this? Who is this? Who the hell is this? You let my friends go. Do you hear me? I grab my tablet and take a selfie. Anton, this is. This is difficult for me to say, but I'm a bear. I send the oh picture to everyone <laughs> from my <laughs> tablet. Okay. I pose. I, this is amazing. I oh, added get, get to the same folder that in. has Cass and the jump. Okay. I'm just gonna start an album now. <laughs> Selfie. Amazing. We are oh, not shoot, very stealthy, I can assure everybody. you this has never happened to me before. Mm. So, I send it to everyone. I, uh, make a defense check. Oh, make a defense crap. check. I mean, you and Katsuchi and you to make a defense check. You're going to get a bonus because you have cover thanks to the car. Oh, oh my gosh. Speed of difficulty. <laughs> and I'm a bear. Um, <laughs> for an hour. Difficulty seven. Oh no, for an hour. Difficulty Do you seven. Have your shield? Difficulty seven. I, I'm going to reduce. You guys have got partial cover. No, I don't. It's reduced down to seven. Because it's a surprise attack. Oh shit! Difficulty seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm rolling d20. Sorry. Yep. Speed defense will knock it down to two for me. Speed or knock it so down to two. what? Mm -hmm. You knock down by three. This is a difficulty uh, without your shield. What is it? A difficulty four? Uh, uh, armor would effort? not come into play. I heard something. Uh, Did you say armor's seven? just for soaking okay. damage. Yeah. You said it's a difficulty seven. Yeah. Oh, I have uh, defense as a skill as well. Oh, okay. So then for you, it's going to drop down to six. Yeah. All right. Uh, shift, shift, trained without armor. I've lowered it okay, to four. four. Oh, me too. Yeah. Make your rolls. Okay. I'm also Four. Oh. I'll be soaking some of them. Oh, 19. Oh, hey. All right. Thank you. Thank you, and you minor effect. Oh! I am also okay. So as you're talking to Kostji, Kashi's yeah. hit with rounds as the side of the car just suddenly starts exploding with sparks from full auto fire coming from the tree lines. Um, you hear drop down. You see uh, muzzle flares from the skyline of a gun going off at full auto. Kashi, um, what's this is going to be a total of eight points of damage. How much of that are you going to soak? Uh, this is, so I have plus five armor versus uh, bashing and piercing. Yes. Uh, this would be piercing. So that is that takes five off of that. Yep. Uh, so then much for that lovable moment. Would I be able to? Let's see. Uh, so you get a special. And I don't know. Oh 
yeah. Endurance is not going to help with that at all. Not here, no, but it could help if you ever have to, like, run through snow for seven miles or whatever. Very well. Um, okay, so I'll be taking three. Of so it feels like a punch to the chest. Your armor absorbs it, but this bullet smashes into you, knocking you back up against the wall. It just rips into your shirt. Um, you all see Kashi get hit with one of these rounds and it sparks on his chest, which can only indicate that it hit the metal rib cage that yeah. Kashi has underneath that muscle line. Um, I immediately <clears throat> grab my stuff and stand in front of Luma. Um, the, or okay. the bear. The bear. Um, so after the, the, the round, so the, the gunshots go off. It is, you, after the gunshots go off, you hear a woman screaming, you're not taking me! Uh, do we hear this stuff? Over the comms? Uh, like, hear the gunfire or anything? After the gunfire stops, I would say you could probably hear it through the comms because technically, Luma, your your tech tra- shapeshifts. It shapeshifts with me. And yeah, also, yeah. I would also like to, um, uh, just just to inform you all, uh, I am Luma-sized bear. So I'm like, I'm like a teenager-sized <laughs> baby bear. <laughs> Um, because oh. I can't shapeshift larger than myself. Okay. I can do mu- I can do smaller, yeah. but no, black bear is about. Con- that's about. That's conceivable. Yeah. 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 So, so, so I just want to open us let you know the ship. Okay. So if someone decides to. Yeah. How far are we? Uh. <clears throat> I mean, you're not too far away. You can get there by the end of this coming. Uh. Round. Yeah. I'm. D- I'm opening up the ship. We have a stretchy boy and a and so a lady who a jumped drop. real good. So you're gonna have to drop from the tree line. We're putting Which, the drop and drop ship today. I'm just saying, if you drop from the tree line, it's an 80 foot drop. Do you need a parent? And that's totally a thing that they can figure out, but I'm already just opening okay. up the box. I, I just wanna, I wanna yell back to this woman. I wanna like peek my head over as a bear and just yell, stop shooting. Black bears are a protected species. Um, we come in peace. Because I, because, and I want to do that as a, like a, a pleasant social interaction. <laughs> I'm going to. I'm a bear in a top hat yelling. I'm an. In, I'm a protected species. <laughs> oh my god. I really do blame myself for this whole situation. <laughs> yes. This is so <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna. So given the situation that you're a predatorial animal that's shouting. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, I imagine that's alarming. I'm probably not gonna let you use your social abilities here. Why isn't that? Why I get to maintain my abilities, and my abilities are that I am pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> Does it literally let you just? It do that? literally says I maintain my more normal stats and abilities. All right, then no, and my uh, abilities are thus. All right, then I'm gonna set a high difficulty here to get this person to stop shooting at you. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna set the difficulty at eight. Okay. Frack. <laughs> because well, that's a twenty-four. That's a six already now because I am specialized in pleasant. In talking as a bear. So you need an yes. eighteen okay. or higher. <laughs> you're, yep. Can I assist? Um, I screamed. You'll get a come in peace. No, you're not going okay. to assist on the this. Edge of I, yeah. Um, I look pleasant. I think that's probably all. I think they're you probably can, looking at the ahead bear. Ahead. Right. The talking um, bear. Okay. So like, what? Five, it goes to five. For, what are you doing to help I me? Can't. Can't I can't. You cannot. I can't help a talking help bear. Me. I'm sorry. My we might be five to five. My ability stopped. Okay. Because you don't have the five. opportunity to do something like understanding right now. Hops just go. No. Do you Yogi. Study then? <laughs> no. And your mimic, like Gee whiz. your your your, tra- your transformation isn't helping here. Correct. I, I would think. say though, mm. I might look like an escaped bear from like a circus <laughs> or something. <laughs> Do we have considering in the year of our I, so I mean, just, just, I'm wearing a top hat. How I, well known are Hanna Barbera intellectual <laughs> property? <laughs> I, I just say that it's very likely whoever is seeing you shout as a talking bear is going to assume you're some kind of demon or mutant or something. Sure. Um, so this is this is going to be a very. I said please. <laughs> oh my God. Um, all right, I'm rolling at a five. <laughs> All right, roll. That's just what's gonna happen. This will go well. Can I not spend effort? You are. That's what getting you to five. Uh, I'm going to inject a GM intrusion you can spend here. More if you, you want. are. You know what? That's fair. That's yeah, fair. That's probably. You know what? I'm gonna take it. <laughs> Gain two XP. Okay. Um, with the level of shenanigans, I'm not letting you. I am not letting you spend any effort on this. <laughs> the GM intrusion is. Oh, that, you're too kind. <laughs> Um, the GM intrusion here is essentially the person clearly is either terrified of bears or or has a bloodthirst because they're gonna open fire again after your action here. Shit. <clears throat> so go ahead. Hey. I'll let you take the roll. 
Okay. And I, I still I, get to roll? I'm gonna, yes, because you're already you're you're doing this. So I already no, called for a roll. Oh, but the okay. contingency Thanks. here she is, is I'm not going to let you apply any effort to this. Oh, this so it's oh. a difficulty better. six? So yes. it's a six still, a not six. a five. Yeah. You got it. So I have to have, this is a miracle. <laughs> Get a nat 20. All right, I'm going to do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing, Luna. All right. Ooh, Best bear. Hot dice, hot dice. Best okay, hot none dice. of them were... One was slightly lukewarm, so that tells you how this is going to go. <laughs> oh, my God, we're all going to die. It was caught. 20. That Mother! It's cocked. It's, it's a cocked 20. <laughs> 20. In the freaking theme of my dumb book. Yeah. In front of the game. It, it, it is really cocked, you guys. That's, that, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you just get rid of no, it. it. Get rid of it. Get Burn cut. it. I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just keep it over here for now where it won't Please bother anyone. One. Please it's not going to hurt anyone. For bear persuasion. I know. It's fucked up. It could have been beautiful. <laughs> well, may yet? No. Oh. No. That was the loop. Wait, I want to spin That was it. What'd you get? It was an eight. Who cares? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm a bear. Uh, make defense rolls. Can Kashi take an action before? Yes, I'll let you take an action. Uh, Kashi will uh, just immediately begin walk, you know, charging towards the source of the gunfire, trying to uh, be between right. uh, Hops and Luma and the gunfire. Trying to basically be a shield, present a target. All right, so then you're going to basically exit the other side of the vehicle, <laughs> run around to their side of the vehicle, and charge up the hill. So what I will do is... I'll let you, that's all gonna be one action. Mm. Um, or that'll, that'll be your round. You're gonna basically burn your two moves, essentially, to just bolt around the side of the car and charge up the hill towards this person. Yes. They're about 60 feet away, firing down on you. Okay. Um, but that will definitely to... that will definitely aggro the person and put you in between the two and the car. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll do this. Um, because you're throwing yourself in the danger, I'm just gonna have Kostji make a defense check. Cool. Sure. Um, you are running straight into gunfire. <laughs> yes. Um, so I'm going to put the difficulty, uh, the difficulty for this was seven. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna raise it by one. So eight. Because you're, yeah, so eight, because you're charging up a hillside straight okay. into the barrel of a gun, so go ahead and make your roll. And add the, the defense. Defense so it should drop back down to seven. Back down to seven, yes. Yep. And can I, what can I spend on this? Would it be speed or? Uh, yeah, speed. Okay. It would be your speed it's... defense. Um, actually, yeah, it would be your speed defense. All right. So that will take it down to six. That's spinning a level of effort, so yeah, that'll drop it down to six. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's got to roll an 18. Oh my god. Don't run at guns. We'll see. I am mostly right, counting on my ability to soak 13. Ah. Yeah. Um, okay, um, so you're going to take another three points of damage. Very well. As the gun opens up again, except for the trick to this one is at the end of this round of fire, um, the thudding and the sparks you see flying off Kostji is a hell of a thing to see from behind because he's silhouetted against the night as you watch the cyborg charge up the hill towards this figure that's firing down. When you get to the top of the hill, you immediately hear click, 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 coming from the gun. Awesome. Um, you're at them. Okay. Um, let's talk. You just stop in front of them. Yes, and, um, and I'm also adopting a non-threatening pose and keeping myself in between the she, others. Lowers the gun and just, holy shit, and begins to step back from you. She's shaking. She looks like she's bound, like bundled up to 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 reflect that she's out here in the woods. Um, but you can tell she's it's a bit worn, a bit dirty. Um, and she takes a couple of steps back, staring at you. It's okay. If I want to hurt you, I certainly <clears throat> have motivation to do so. But I don't. Hmm? You, These you people, including talking bear, don't want to hurt you either. What the fuck, <laughs> Eric? Just a question. <laughs> Do I recognize the voice? Um, I've st I've like like special talentedly examined a handful of people we might have encountered. I'll give you this. Yes. The voice is familiar. Great. You don't recognize it, but it's familiar. Okay. Um, you are still a bear. So whatever social but interaction. But I'm still me. So I'm just I'm just gonna tell you this. <laughs> I understand you've got superpowers and whatnot. Yeah. But a talking bear walking up to a I am kind of alarmed at the minute. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw I'm this a at naked you right bear. now. Alarming. <laughs> You're not naked, you have a hat on. Well, uh, I technically. That You're wearing have, a fur coat. That have, should have dissolved by now. 
Oh, you can shift back? Well, it takes an hour. I mean, no. Well, she can oh, well, I guess it's like a concentration. It spell. says it's it. a passive effect. Action oh, to you end. can shift Initiate back action to end. Oh, thank yeah, God. no, it's not a curse. <laughs> you just take an action and you're done. Yeah. When she says, oh, this isn't oh, brave, right? Yeah, yeah. It can go up to an hour. You know, I thought it was mom. an hour. Oh. No, no, no. But I'm thank you miss... for the past 20 minutes. Yeah, of I'm going to miss that voice. Welcome. Priceless. I'm kind of into it now. <laughs> uh, I think you've. And honestly, Luma doesn't know that I can do that. I'll say this. You might be so startled. Don't, don't ever change. Okay. Um, all right, Thanks. so. Thanks. I'm going to start Gosh, walking. She likes you. me as a bear. All right. I'm Russian, of course. So, <laughs> real quick, let's, get, let's bring it all back in. So, you want to start walking up to her. <clears throat> what are you doing? Um, well, she stopped firing. Yeah, she looks like she's terror. She looks like she's, whoever she is, the silhouette, uh, but you can't really make out detail from here, but she's frozen in terror. Okay. Maybe, maybe Luma, oh. you, you stay here for a second and I'm a little embarrassed now. I'm, can you give me a minute? Yeah. Can you like, can you go around the other side? I just, can I be a second? I just uh, want to be alone for one second. Sure. I don't know what's going to happen if I try to de-shape right now. Sure. I just want to be safe. Can I just say you you make a great bear? I'm going to go over there and Wait, you... one second. I've always kind of wanted to know, can you scratch me behind the ears? Okay. Uh, we just got shot with gunfire. And I need some comforting uh, hops. I'm going to scratch I this ears. Very I almost became someone's she's head in a cabin. I'll be right with you, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> it's not as comforting as I thought. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, you see, we are talking now. It's all good. It's all good. You come up the hill? Yeah, after I Pops. scratch Luma. When you reach the top of the hill, as you're, as you're kind of like, sorry, you know, trying to ease this out, you freeze dead in your tracks as you stare into the face of Dr. Anika Patel. That's why I asked. And we have to go on break. <laughs> Because we are 10 minutes past. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> huh? so we'll be back in 10 minutes, you guys. Don't go anywhere. I thought for sure. Let's hey, go ahead and jump right back into the game because we left at a pretty pivotal moment. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that happened. Yeah, it was pretty grisly. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I've had enough of your black humor. humor. I could mm. hardly bear it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I just hope it wasn't polarizing. No. <laughs> I thought it was the you kind of quality this. humor. Oh, you me. did this. Oh, she did this. <laughs> <laughs> mm, maybe. All right. Um, it's pandemonium here. I'm sorry. All right. Let's get the. Bye. <laughs> that joke has been made in chat, and to everyone who made it, I salute you. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get these sound effects going. Mm. I've lived up to my family name. <laughs> Play. It is on. We do always call her mama there. It's probably just quiet. Yeah, oh, it I'm is quiet. No, Wait, what does that mean? All you right. Me. Look at me. Um, I'm the bear now. Hops, you're standing, staring at Dr. Patel. Mm -hmm. um, she looks weathered, a um, bit smudgy, dirty, like she's been living out here for a while. Her hair is a bit stringy. She's got it pulled back, but she is decked out in what looks like she has a tactical vest on. Um, and you see that she is wearing fingerless gloves, um, cargo pants, and boots. It looks like she's in survival mode. And as you come walking up, she stares at you for a second and notices you're kind of dressed casual walking up next to this cyborg. Um, the gun that she's holding <clears throat> looks like an older model, uh, fully automatic, like plasma round um, assault rifle. Um, and the barrel is still superheated from the unleashing of the entire clip. So it's glowing faintly in the night, smoke drifting up from the edge of its barrel. And she's lowering it down and looking at both of you and going, all right, so who the fuck are you? How did you find me out here? Koski, are you still in the sub vocals? Mm -hmm. Am I? Uh, I can... Yes, but are you? I'm not. I'm, ah. I, I'm normal now. Okay. Oh, I'm going to start walking up since my friends are up there already and not being shot at. Okay. It, it takes a second, but as you are, you kind of like, woo, getting your body back, um, you, uh, yeah. you can hear conversation <clears throat> going on. And when you reach to the top of the hill. Hi. 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 Her, and she, on top of this moment, of staring at her for a second. She lowers the gun and goes, Luma? It's you, Dr. Patel. Dr. Patel? You know the this other lady. Got, got, uh, Say what? Yes. It's Dr. Patel. We thought you were dead. <gasps> what are you, you doing out there? You left the note there? for Lacey? She's the only other person you could have. Wait, 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 say again. Did oh you say God. Dr. Patel? She lowers the gun and goes, Yeah. Have we ever met? 
Well, not formally. Um, it was very quick and informal, I guess you should say. Wait, do you remember after the big conference uh, with the with the riot breaking out? And what was the last thing you remember? Because you, you ran out to an alley and Maida, I don't know. Have you ever met us? Are the rest of you here? They'll be here very shortly. You are a doctor. I was, yeah. Then you can probably afford to replace this shirt because I quite liked it. I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Yeah. That's right. Anyone else I would probably be cut in half. <clears throat> um, yeah, I've got clothes in the cabin. This is not important right now, sorry. Um, how are you still here? How are you? Hold, 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 hold up. Why don't you get everyone else who you've got with you, and I'm just up this hill. At that very um, moment, yeah. Ass, with an Anton parachute, just <clears throat> gingerly drops down. And they're here. It's Holy here. shit. You just sort of... <laughs> It's a rough landing. Anton oh. is not as light as a parachute, so. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I thought I was using my powers, but okay. Uh, you're uh, using your powers to catch wind, and but uh, you are. You're still carrying weight. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, you. It's a rough landing, but you guys are fine. Sorry. Touch. Sorry. No, oh, that was awesome. You're strong. I forgot. What the hell? You see, Doctor. It's unmistakably Doctor Anika Patel. Um, you're dead, lady. She's holding. Um, a gun that's still, like, the glow is starting to fade finally in the night, um, smoking, but she just, you also see Kotsuchi has been shot to hell. Um, doesn't He's seem fine. that concerned about it, though. Um, you've seen him take gunfire before, um, but she is, as I described before, like, she's wearing a tactical, like, uh, vest over her, <clears throat> as well as, like, what looks like survival clothes. Are you what all you okay? Were you a bear? We'll talk about that later. Okay. We saw you die. You died. When you say that, you see that her face, it, it's, it, it betrays an emotion there of just like distress. And she just says, oh God. And for a second, she just turns around and says, I can't believe this. Is this all of you? We're almost. Um, we're waiting on two more. And about that point, Oya comes running up and goes, what the hell? What is exactly. this? Yeah. Um, has sort of this immediate reaction and spew of Spanish coming out of Oya as she's just like pointing at like this shock and alarm. Um, and Dr. Patel just goes, uh, why don't you all come up to the cabin? Is there a path to your house? What's that? Is there a path to your house? There's one more of us. Oh, um, sort of. It's, it's rough, but it's as it goes. I, this isn't technically a cabin. It was more of a, a hunting lodge that I turned into a living space. It's not really supposed to be accessible to anybody who doesn't have something to. Go on ahead. We can, we can get We've got Kashi's car. <laughs> yes, you saw the I just here. volunteer to help in whatever way. Yep, same. You want to drive Kashi's car? I don't think we could drive it through the tree. <laughs> the Why excitement not? level rising. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like a landscape, I mean, right? If you turn into a bear once, it's all of a sudden, why not? Why can't we do this? Why, why not? Yeah. The nice thing is that unlike Phoenix, uh, Aurora operates with a sort of gyroscopic balance uh, that means that, as I recall, they don't really have a standard front caster design where I would have to worry about wheeling over things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And as a result, when you're just using two rear wheels, even <clears throat> if they're fairly thin, it's relatively doable, especially given that Lacey does have power assist. It's I wouldn't do it. Lacey wouldn't do it recreationally. Let me put it this way. I, and, okay. And, and right. I don't think this is any stretch of the imagination. The in 2119, okay. there's no reason in the world why a chair can't navigate a rough terrain. There's no reason in the world. So if we've got, if we've got. What if the rough terrain just fucked right off? It was just, this was specifically said. Difficult for everyone. <laughs> yep. Yes. Difficult for everyone. Yeah. Uh, um, we are going to just like take a minute to gather as a group. Yeah. We're going to wait for everybody because what we had just had this Isn't huge. Is everyone here? thing 
dropped on us. Well, we're, I'm just okay. saying, before we like go inside we're the house, assembling. we're gonna wait for Lacey to arrive, Oya, everybody. So, to, 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 as this is happening, cause she's like, I feel like I am missing something. You know each other, but you say you have not met. What we'll meet you on? in the cabin. We, uh, we don't know where it is. It's right just, here. She points, she's like, I, it's hard to see cause I t- oh. turned the lights out when I heard you guys coming, but it's right there. Okay. And you see, Probably a one-room shack cabin, probably big enough to support all of you guys and just all of you guys. A real small little space. And it it looks like it is built in a place that would be hard to see, hard to get to. Just generally, like, meant, not meant to be found. Yeah. Okay, so. Is she out of earshot? Um, are you, you, you telling her to go away? And we'll like, meet you in the cabin. She's just a... <laughs> Why? Well... Sure. Because sure. Because Anthony, we do the oh, cuddle. Yeah, sure. Um, she keeps staring at you, Luma. Yep. And she moves up the hillside. Does she know you and not the rest of us? What's happening? Why is she alive? I mean, I don't I, know. Is she alive? I held her body. I don't know. That's I the woman the who go out turned us into this. The one who gives you your uh, powers. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but then they killed died. Her. Yeah. Why don't we go and ask her? She seems fine, though. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm suspicious. It's probably because she never met us. That one. Exactly. Probably That's what I'm thinking. What if she's a clone? That's what if what she's Lacey a clone? Said. What if? What if she? Let's go find out then. What yeah. if she's like Luma? What if? What if she had some of the Callisto shit in her too and can do the thingy? Let's find out. You mean shape shifting? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so either clone she was a bear or shape shifter or super scroll of like. What, 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 like what? I want to go find out. More data is required. All Does right. it have those obnoxious, like, the two steps that every cabin has? Uh, no. As I said, it's not really made to be a cabin. It doesn't have any steps at all or a front porch or anything. It is simply just built right on the oh, so ground. So they don't raise the foundation. Mm-mm. No. This, this, awesome. This I love looks that. Like, Lacey's happy. <clears throat> this looks like it, it was an old shack that mm-hmm. was just converted into a living space. Yeah, it was it's like not a really. Storage um, shack. It has, it has posts. But as y'all are approaching this cabin, you can see that it's not even direct, it does not connect directly to the ground. It's literally built on these sort of concrete uh, pillars <laughs> that are jetted into the ground. Yeah, this is axe murderer territory. Yeah. yeah. I'm not putting my staff away, um, that's for sure. Y'all are moving closer to the cabin and you <laughs> see- This is, I'm a high um, the entire cabin. You see the archaic was- vision of a lamplight being turned on. A what? As, huh. um, Lacey. Aside from the gun that she's holding, there is no tech in this cabin. I, it is this whole quiet. Place is really, really. Um, Actually, she the bugs outside are super loud. <laughs> <laughs> she goes and sits That's, down um, on this that. crickety bed, um, like box screen. Uh, spring bed. She just sits down on it. You see, she's got supplies and stuff that have been that have been pulled out and whatnot. You you see like some old uh, field rations that have been set aside, um, and there is a few devices that look like they've been taken apart. Um, most of them look like typical stuff that a normal person would have in Los Angeles. Looks like she's dismantled them. Um, but aside from that, just from entering this small room. You can tell she has set up a living situation out here. Doesn't look like it's meant to be permanent. From what you can tell, it looks like she's been out here for a while, though. Um, and she sits down on the bed. Um, she's like, uh, you f- come on in. As she is sitting down, Kush is just observing her on thermal. Is she giving off heat as an organic wood? Mm-hmm. Yep, she sure is. Um, Kush, the- you also notice the way she's moving. She's wearing a tactical vest and is handling a gun. She is clearly a beginner. Hmm. Hmm. What's the inside of this little hunting lodge look like? It's mostly made out of wood, as you would see. You do see a couple of occasional metal rivets and whatnot, and mm-hmm. uh, some poles that are keeping this place standing and structurally sound. Um, but for fully, the most part- Fully furnished couches, like dinner, like there's, breakfast table? There is an old gas stove, hmm. propane tanks. This looks like what would be a modern day, like. Like again, like a, like a cleaned out hunting lodge. It doesn't look like this place was actually ever meant to be a place that you could live in. Mm. Maybe crash for a night or two, but there's no insulation when you come inside. So it's like most apartments in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Is there a signal huh? here? Because like in the year of our pork 2019, mm. you go up into the mountains, there isn't signal. Is there, there? You can connect to satellites here, definitely. Oh, so I can go into the county office. I can go into the county office, like ownership, and find out who owned this cabin. 
like uh, on the records. Yes, you could. Cool. Mm -hmm. I assume We're enough time is. I see you selfie. Uh, enough time has passed that I can recover. Uh, Make a recovery roll. It's a yes. D6 plus your uh, tier, which I believe is two. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. And I have rapid recovery. Oh, Ooh. what does that oh. tell you? Uh, uh, roll action, again, doesn't it? Ten minute recovery roll uh, takes one action instead, and then so I get two recovery. So you get to roll two, yeah. You know, if you want, um, just for the sake of the narrative at this point, I don't mind saying that everyone who, who has expended, especially you, Lacey, who's been burning through, it's a new it's a new scene. I don't mind giving you guys back your pools. Cool. Ah. Um, so go ahead and take those back. <laughs> Sam is um, happy. Will I roll still? Or? Nah, don't worry about it. Save the recovery rolls and stuff like that. That's um, your mistake, man, because we're going to kick the crap out of Dr. Um, pulling so uh, yeah. pulling <laughs> flat <laughs> slugs out of uh, okay. my various folds and clips. Yeah, these 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 tech slugs <laughs> that you're pulling off, I mean, they're, they're bullet casings that are designed to superheat as they fire because they're plasma rounds. Um, these are typically military issue. Um, so as you're pulling out, it's not unusual to see somebody who's fallen off the grid might have gotten their hands on stuff like this. Um, you've, you've seen this stuff all the time. You've used stuff like this. But she does um, not seem to know what she's doing. She doesn't seem to know what she's doing. <laughs> she still um, hit me, though. Yeah. It's good. Beginner's yeah. luck. Full, yeah. full auto? <laughs> like, <laughs> spray. Ah, spray and pray, as they say. You, Dr. Um, Patel, right? She sits down on the bed and looks at all of you as you're taking in the... And as you voice the first question, she goes, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry that asshole went after your family. We never got to tell you that. Uh, I'm guessing you're talking about Fletcher. Right? You know about Fletcher? I mean... Yeah. Yeah, I know all about Fletcher. Well, mostly about Fletcher. What do you know? Oh, man, the stuff I have to tell you guys. Okay. I mean, I don't even know how to start saying this stuff. How are you alive? Yeah, you can start there. Okay. I'm alive because you saved my life. No, I didn't. I watched... I held you as you died. That wasn't me. That was you. Wait, what? what? No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. What are you, what are you saying? You're gonna have to explain that. Um, so, Please um, leave. I got um, about the time I started figuring out what was going on at Pyramid Star, you came and found me. And you said that you were here from the future. Oh my and that your friend Oya had sent you. And then you went on a pretty crazy story, and I thought you were out of your mind, and then you shapeshifted in front of me. That sounds like me. Um, anyway, you told me a pretty crazy, crazy story, and even with the shape-shifting, I didn't believe it, but then you knew about the Callisto energy source that I've been working on for years. Um, oh, boy. Uh, I have some tea. I'm not thirsty. So no, the no, 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 no. The doctor no. Patel that, that hit us with the, in, that was Luma? I did this to us. You told me that there were two options. There was, you wanted to try to get the energy off world, or you were going to have to give it to y you and your friends again for one more shot. One more sh You told me so about- we fail. Whatever, wherever you came from when you visited me, you made it very clear it did not go well. So you- What you went wrong? Fletcher is- This is just what you told me, and- Yeah. I don't know where you got this info, and- Fletcher is something not of this world. Um, I, 
think the exact words you used were interdimensional being. That yeah. doesn't sound like me. Huh. And, uh... That sounds like Lacey. Mm-hmm. Telling you what to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, apparently... It's a thing that's been around since basically when the planet was formed and uh, has something to do with the origin of the Callisto energy source, which you learned to great cost that he has the, it has the ability to manipulate. And it turned it against all of you and you told me you were all killed. And Oya sent you here and it killed her to do it. Okay. And you told me that the same thing had happened where she had come from, that this has happened before. And then you went on this whole story about how Fletcher seems to be able to learn despite all the different timelines that are fracturing. He somehow remembers everything that's been happening, so he's adapting to everything you're trying. And you were desperate. So you told me that after getting me out of there and hiding my family, that you were going to go back in. And you had a message that Lacey had made for you in case everything had gone south to leave for you here. And when you didn't come back, I realized that I was fucked and we were all fucked. But then I guess she didn't fail because here you all are. We've got another shot. We're all here in a perpetual loop of death. Yeah, another shot of what? Like, what do we keep failing? We don't know what we've tried, what we haven't tried. We don't even know what it is. You have to prove this. You I, have to prove it. She just throws up her hands and says, what? Look, as a scientist, I get it. But I don't know what to tell you. Why didn't I change back? Something about Fletcher being able to pull the Callisto energy source out of your bodies. No, you, I mean when I, if you're, when I was you, when I when I held so we would me die. Why you, didn't I change back? When you came to me, you said that Fletcher was pulling the Callisto energy source out of your bodies, and it's what he used to kill all of you. This may have locked people before we were trapped in. You said you didn't have, know how many more times you could change. Oh my God. I have to say, this all sounds pretty crazy, and I'm saying that as a Russian cyborg. Yeah. No, I... It took me a while to process this. Okay, but this means it's not you, Luma, because it's Luma from a different dimension, and it's, it's, more, of a, it's more of a many worlds thing. You don't... You, you don't die. But this is you don't not die. You're okay. Die. No. You won't, you won't die. We're going to save you. We're going to be the ones who... Doesn't who's it have the to be this... Thing timeline version of me in the future going back? No, it's going into a different one. And I would assume, and you're you're the physicist, so please, please, and correct me on this, like, if an interdimensional entity is sitting there, you could see into all of the many worlds from that position rather than being inside any given one of them. And so Fletcher could see all of the possibilities where we can't. It's going into different worlds. Not, not a loop. We can save you. We can save you. We can fix this. We can fix this. You can. can because apparently the key to breaking this is you. And she looks at Oya, who stares at her for a second, and she's like, how? And Patel, she says, I, I have a theory. Um, I think... The Callisto-6 energy source is an energy source I refined. And by the way, I, I named it after my cat, so sorry. Um, but um, the, the thing is, the energy source at its fundamental level alters the laws of the universe. And once it settles, it becomes, a, it becomes formed. In your case, and in, 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 uh, in your case, Luma, it, it helped you become incredibly adaptable and quick, and you were able to change your shape. Um, and she, she told me about Cass being able to lift things and do incredible feats of strength. For whatever reason, the Callisto-6 energy source, 
I was able to refine it so it didn't kill the people it was touching or have a backlash effect like it did in one of the other patients that I knew. Um, but it is somehow intrinsically linked to the Fletcher creature thing. He's a part of it somehow. It, it, he, he's, he's, he shares an origin with it. I don't know what. But I do know that when the energy source from what the other Luma told me, when it struck you all, and it seems to be pretty consistent that it manifests the same way, Oya apparently got the, the most, for lack of a better way of saying it, you got dosed hard. And Oya's just listening with that look on her face when she doesn't really have anything to say, but is processing everything that's being thrown at her. Um, she does this sort of instinctual look over to you, Cast, like she's looking for support, but she doesn't reach out. She just kind of, and keeps listening to Dr. Patel, and she just says, all I know is, is that the one variable that constantly is introduced into this cycle that could possibly disrupt what's going on is Oya, because she has the ability to manipulate time and space. Um, I don't understand it, but you can, and... I was told that the few times that you've sent people back has killed you. Well, every time. The well, Luma, you're, the, you're not doing that. She says, I'm, I'm not doing that because we're not going to have to do it again. What if we... Oh, time. Okay. Patel's like, <clears throat> I, I've had to sit in this cabin and just think about this. And I, every day I wake up wondering if the world's going to end again. I, Luma told me about what happened after you all fell in a fight with Fletcher. She also told me something very important. She said that it all started with some kind of um, uh, a, 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 a rock shipment from the moon or something. There was like a, there was a, there was a, a, a touchdown. It was a huge celebrated media event, but there was actually just a, a shipment apparently of, of Callisto energy source, which is somewhere in the core of the moon. Of course. I don't know when this happens, but apparently that's the catalyst that sets everything in motion. And, and the Fletcher creature finally comes into contact with the refined energy source using my research, and which I th thought I had erased. But if it's to carry through in this timeline, then he'll do it again. Except if he gets in contact with it, then it happens all over again. And Loomis said, everything dies. Everything. Lacey, can you check the web to see if there's any shipment coming from the moon at some point on any record anywhere? You don't have to roll for that. It's a quick connection, and it's literally just scrolling through it's keywords and news. Information. Yes, um, there is a shuttle mission, a return home flight from the astronauts in one month. What? They're going to cycle out crew members. This happens once every six months. And it's a very expensive undertaking, but Pyramid Star has been doing it like clockwork. Huh. Okay. Right. Six months. So, um, it is important that this shuttle from the moon does not arrive. Uh, I think so. Lacey, please tell me that there's not a shuttle expected to arrive for another 100 years. Or one month. What? We have one month to stop the end of everything? So we, we stop it. We don't know what we've already tried. I mean, so we don't know what we have already tried, but... We don't know what we already did. Or how many times this has happened before. Well, apparently a lot. Apparently I die a lot. Not this time. Not this time. He needs... Uh, uh, an intense concentration of the power source. I, I, I only know that. Okay. And I know that fighting him, he is able to pull it from your bodies. Hmm. Okay, about that, you're the expert on this energy source. Is the energy there... source, but Luma's telling me all of this. I, I don't know if any of that's true or not. I'm okay. just telling you what she saw. We have a month. Can we figure out some kind of, I don't know, shield or like armor or something that keeps it in us or like, I don't know what, like, if, if he's gonna pull it out of us or, or something, I don't know. 
Perhaps I can be of some assistance. I do not have this Callisto 6 energy within me. That's true. So you wouldn't be as vulnerable if you went up against Fletcher? I don't know. He could against probably just kill me with brute force. An interdimensional uh, being, yeah. <laughs> we don't know what an interdimensional being is capable of or the capabilities of interacting within a dimensional plane. We know, I guess maybe just some Unknown, yeah. yeah. I mean, whatever enabled him to set up the clone system and whatever form of interaction, maybe telepathic, that he has with the clones, the imprinting system. Uh, wow, you guys know about the clones already? That was one of the first things oh, that we yeah. found out. Oh man, when I found out, that's when I knew I needed to get the hell out of there. I mean, I was already involved with Castium research, unfortunately, so I had access to what they were doing. And I saw what they were doing. There's that one light in here. Mm-hmm. Does it pop? Flame. Oh, yeah. It's actually an oil lantern. <laughs> so nothing happens to it. <laughs> um, you want me to shoot she it? She says, there was, oh, fuck. there was one other um, who had the energy source, but it was very unstable in him. We have more than one. Oh, we, we found actually 34. <laughs> Met a few. 34 that have been reported. How many that have, or known. We didn't find out. I heard about this. Wait, this, this has something to do with the explosion on the train tracks, right? Yeah. Okay. Would that have been filtered through your research, or are these people just going to start getting really sick and dying all over Los Angeles? It's probably, it's very likely that the Callisto energy source will manifest in them the way it has done to you, but nowhere near on the scale. It'll probably be a minor enhancement. Someone might be able to see farther than they've ever seen before, or jump higher than they've ever been able to jump, but I don't see that being anything. You, If you have your abilities, it's because you had direct contact with a concentrated point of, uh, of, of the energy. Do yeah, you, I remember. Do you have your notes? No, I destroyed them. Could you reconstruct <laughs> your notes? Most of them, but I mean, I can tell you whatever you need to know. Wait, Question wait, is, wait. how aware is this thing <coughs> of this recurring cycle? Is it apart from it? Does it know this has happened before? Luma told me that the Luma that came to her, that Oya had sent, uh, had mentioned that the messages that keep getting sent down from the timelines was is that the entity has begun to adapt and seems to be able to anticipate every single time we came up with a new strategy. Then like it was learning from each timeline and being able to take that with it into the next one. Then it does know, which is not good. It may know we're here right now. This may have happened at some point in the other timeline. You I watching asshole? It's not gonna work this time. This is the last one. Get fucking ready. Yeah. <laughs> Probably good to assume it does know. So what next? Wait, so, so, you need to explain this step by step. You were working at your job and this person approaches you looking roughly around the same age. Oh yeah, was I that? Perhaps one month older? You looked a little different. Your eyes were different. Huh. How were her eyes different? You looked like you had seen some shit. Okay, so huh. this Luma who had seen some shit comes to you and says, I'm from the future, not that far in the future, but the future, and I'm gonna replace you so that you can go and live off of the grid in a cabin in the woods, and I can take this energy source and as a last ditch effort, start this whole thing over again, because we're gonna try again. Close, yeah. She took my place because she knew I would get killed if I went back. She had a better chance of getting around security, fighting people off if she had to, if she got caught. Um, I knew there'd be a riot. She, yeah. But if you always you give us our be. powers, the difference is you're alive. I, I honestly... Unless this has been a Unless paradox from I the beginning. Unless I always give us our powers. It's hard to predict, again, the, if I can just stress this, everything that I've learned about from what Oya has told me, from what Luma has, through Luma, and from what Luma has told me, Oya is kind of the key to all of this. It seems like 
just being around her and the decisions y'all make in her proximity are disrupting everything somehow. It's what's made it possible to constantly try again. Um, I don't know how it's working. Wow. The Callisto 6 energy source, the, the refinement process continued to fail over and over and over and over, and it was my fault. Okay. I saw that one of the earlier samples, the sample number six, I, I, I don't know, it showed promise. That I, I decided to go back to the beginning to follow my notes, to follow my instincts, and I didn't know what we were developing at the time, but then when I saw what it was capable of doing, you helped get my family out of Los Angeles, and you helped get me out of that place, and I gave you everything I had, and you told me to wait here, and that if everything went wrong, you were gonna put that message somewhere in Pyramid Star. Great. Because you knew Lacey would find it somehow. Okay, so we're It's something involved? about a computer virus? A computer virus? No, 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 no. I no. didn't find it. That message was just coordinates to here, to find you here. She said there was something about a computer Tails? virus. Tails was... found it and showed it to me. Tails found Blue Dolphin Base and showed it to me. Wait, is Tails you? Are you Tails? Don't be absurd. Be. That, that... It's not so absurd. Oh my god. The, the... Oh my god, are you... No, the entity, that Tails thing, whatever, wh what we heard it say out of Mark's mouth, that is not Lacey. You, that was not Lacey. Lacey would never have said any of those things. What did it say? It said. It said. It said that Wanting it wanted to, to see, see people die. Everybody die. Everyone could, would kill everyone. That it would all. And that is not Lacey. This does not sound like you, little thick friend. Who knew what? They, they knew all of this. They knew all of this was coming. Can I just interject? I, I, I doubt whatever this thing you're talking about is. You, you're a technopath, correct? You can't travel back through time through a computer. Well, well then how, how does how does this 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 thing know that the end of the world is coming like in a month? I don't know, but Luma didn't tell me much about this. I, I guess it's Tails. I don't know what Tails is, but I joined the club. She, she had just mentioned. Uh, she had just mentioned there was a computer virus that was somehow connected to everything. Great. That it was a thinking living computer virus. Okay. You said, I hope it lives in this reality. <laughs> she said okay. she hoped it lives in this reality? That's what she told me. Then it is important. Then okay. somehow it yeah. is a key. Yeah. It did set off the <clears throat> trap before. What trap? We were at the, the, the trap. on the train. Of the train. It set off the trap before we were able to get huh. caught. I want to just uh, plant a text file in uh, Kylan Cross's Pyramid Star uh, parental controls that said you were right. Okay. Um, just as you start to do that, Oya leaps to her feet, rushes over to this big tub sink that she's got, and proceeds to throw up. Oh. And her knees buckle a little bit as she holds herself on the sink. If she looks like she's going to fall, I'm going to try to catch her. Okay, you catch. Yeah, she looks like she's about to give out. You catch her. Um... She just, she doesn't say anything. She just puts her hand on you. Um, Jesus. Not, not to make you more uncomfortable, Oya. Oh, yeah. But it seems that y I'm getting my information from a future me, from Oya to future me to send all the way back before we were us but also Oya's been visited too I don't know anything about that I didn't say anything about that um there was you, no like weird alternate no Oya no you didn't say anything about that she well, that's good that means we're different than the others so far 
No, you would have probably mentioned something like that. Okay, so we just need to focus on things that are totally different from this reality than the others. Okay. Um, that being one of them. You just said that... Um, you just said that Oya had found out that they are the variable that makes it possible to pull this off, whatever this is going to be. And but okay. sending sending someone back was too much and had killed them. And it apparently okay. all I know for a fact too from what my other Luma told me was that um she knows that she's at least the third try. Oh my god. Okay. Did the other Luma mention the handsome Russian cyborg? Um. <laughs> not really. Sorry. Okay, so. Maybe, maybe I am new factor? I don't know. But I think it is important this lady be protected, yes? My employer has resources. Better oh. than staying out here yes. in the woods. We need we need to reconstruct as many of your notes as possible. We don't know yeah. how we could handle the Callisto 6 <coughs> energy source and the shipment unless we know more about the Callisto 6 energy source. Yeah. I maybe I've been I trying to get your notes forever. Wait, no, wait. I, I, when, maybe I, I hit it somewhere. If I took over your job, I mean, it's entirely possible I would not have destroyed something I know Lacey in this universe would have totally wanted to read. I maybe. would have gotten really mad at you. You would have. I know that. Even um, future, like... Seen some shit me would have known that Lacey would have totally killed me if I destroyed awesome notes. There's no dimension where I wouldn't have been upset about that science. I don't, I don't know. Okay, I gotta just think like me. When you said that this was the third try, do you mean this was the third try Oya sent back Luma? Or did yeah. Luma send back, or did Oya send back another one of us, or? From what Luma told me, it was the third time she had been, a, a version of her had been sent back, according to the Luma that had told her two times they had tried. So it's, okay, okay. Okay, so worst case scenario, Oya can just. No. Expel her life force and send you back in time. I don't, don't know that. Wait a minute, What are we gonna wait. send me back for? Wait, 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 wait. Anyone anywhere. Hang on. No, 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 this is good, this is good. This is good. What's good? If this, if this was a foregone conclusion, if this was a completely hopeless scenario, none of this would be happening right now. Right. This would just be Fletcher running the world. Yeah. But the fact that we've tried multiple times means that, that he can be defeated. It can be defeated, whatever this thing is. Because again, if it couldn't, yeah. we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. If my theory is that if this being needs the Callisto 6 energy source, and if it's tied to the origin of it, then theoretically, it's weak without it. Theoretically. Stands to reason. It's a bit of a jump in logic, but based off of the data that I've got, if it needs it so badly, <laughs> I mean, unless it needs it for a specific purpose, but every time that Luma told me about what happened when everyone was, you know, and then Dead. the world came to an end, it was, she described... Um, a weakness of Fletcher's. Well, I, I suppose. I, I, the I six know of us have to be some kind of a weakness. It's to possible. Fletcher. If, if it's possible. I mean, if the, the thing is, is that the C6 energy source is tied to him somehow. It is, it is conceivable that there might be a way to manipulate it the way he does. But I, I need more data. I would need a sample. What kind? Well, I, I could look at your blood, but I don't know if that's enough. And um, it might be that I need something raw. Like, uh, as far as I know, aside from that, that the last canister on the train uh, that I saw in the news that um, had a very small dispersal rate, I don't think that would be enough. I would need... A shipment from the moon. I would need a shipment from the moon. Yeah. So the one thing we don't want to happen, you need to happen. Right. Or we go on our own. What was to that, the moon? Lacey? Huh? Did Lacey just suggest we go to the moon? Yeah. Oh, my God. 
Look, I know you know Fuck it, science, yeah. It is theoretically possible. We don't have a spaceship yet. We have a month to get one. We didn't have a dropship, and now we have a dropship. We didn't have an AI, and now we have an AI. By that we logic, we need a spaceship to try to kill us. I don't want to get killed by a spaceship. Sweet baby, don't try to kill us. Wow. Good job, sweet baby. I don't... That's a new idea. I don't think the other way I'd ever mention anything like that. So yeah, we need going to the moon. training for that sort of thing. She throws up her hands. Don't look we at me. We have a month. I, we we <laughs> probably need some deep sea drill training, if anything. To become I don't even that. know how to You know swim. how to die, right? <laughs> yeah, actually. It's my whole life. Uh, uh. If I can point out, um, not that I'm necessarily endorsing this, but it is worth noting that most of the space missions are automated. <laughs> I mean, uh -huh. astronauts fairly rarely fly themselves to the moon anymore. Right. It hasn't been done in almost 25 years. But Unless something goes wrong, like an internet dimensional being. But you know what? <clears throat> I can guarantee you we probably never tried going to the moon. Okay, so you're going to be cosmonauts, yes? <laughs> yes. I just left Los Angeles for the first time. This is a lot. <laughs> it's okay. You can see Los Angeles right. from the moon. Oh. We have a month to learn how to dive in space. <laughs> Wait. A month to dive in space. Wow. Are you guys seriously thinking about doing this? Yes. Uh, we we'll kind of have to think out of the box here. Oh, my God. We can't do a predictable thing, so why don't we pick the craziest thing we can think of? Like, become astronauts in a month. <laughs> Tell me what you need from me. Okay. All no, of your information no, no, no. about you, Atlas is not. Whoa, 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 one at a time. You tell us what you need from us, because I'm going to go out on a stretchy limb here. This is not built <clears> to be a lab. <sighs> We've this got a lab. This location we no. are in right now. Yes. Yeah, so I have an case, advantage. If, if everything is to be believed that we, what well, we've talked about, if it's, if it's uh, what we believe has transpired, has transpired, then everyone thinks I'm dead, which means I've got a little bit of freedom to navigate before I inevitably get caught. But I think... We can't afford to get you caught. Here's, here's the thing. The Callisto 6 energy source, what we know for a fact is that it was deeply rooted in the mantle of this planet and had been since the formation of this planet. The samples that exist on the moon have a lot to do with the formation of the moon. As you probably remember from your science classes in school, the moon was formed impact explosion. Yes. Rock. So it's conceivable that the Callisto 6 energy source are embedded in the rocks that they're trying to get to on the moon's surface. Mm. Okay. In order to extract the Callisto 6 energy source, they really fucked it up the first time and kind of destroyed an entire city in the process. Yep. What they learned is how incredibly yep. unstable it is. So, you're, you're going to need more than just a spaceship. I'm going to need to build you guys containment, uh, con like a, a containment field. I was building one for Kylan before I fled Pyramid Star. Um, I would just need to get to the blueprints that I had drafted up, and then from there I could probably build something for you guys. I can do that for sure. And then if okay. I can get my hands on a sample, I might be able to refine it. But okay. I'm also a little scared of the variables because, then, again, I don't exactly know what comes into play when you say the words interdimensional being. Or moon. Can, I mean, if the Callisto 6 energy source in a raw form comes back to Earth, the good news is, is it'll need to be refined the way the energy source that touched you was refined. It'll just be the Callisto energy source when we get it. Oh, I might be able to refine it again. And maybe, I don't know, dose you guys a second time? What? Huh. Wait, what if we're doing exactly oh. what this Fletcher thing wants us to? What if we're bringing the source now. directly to him? It's what? true, I don't know. You, you might be right, but. I mean, what if this is what starts the whole thing to begin with? We can't well, know. Then we have There's another too much. try again. And nice to meet you a fourth time, Hops. It's possible too that I can learn how to <gasps> to manipulate the C six energy source so that Fletcher can't take it from you. Okay. Or that maybe you could take if it's present in him. Maybe you could take it from him. Uh, okay. 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 Like so <clears throat> you, we need your notes and. We need a containment design. We need to know what schematics that we need. Uh, we need to have tactical plans for fighting people on the moon. <laughs> Wait, why, why are we fighting people on the moon? 
because... They all work for Fletcher. They may or may not know it. Oh my we God. can't let them bring a shipment back. I, we could intercept them mid-run. Yeah. There's Way less crew than a whole moon base on one ship. You should know, too, that um, I know for a fact that Fletcher has some people in his employee that have been dosed with the Callisto power source, but it's unstable. Um, the head of Cassium, I know, <gasps> what? got a dose of it. And head of R&D of Cassium. Uh, yeah. Um, Dr. Moore. We've met. Uh, 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 Blair. Blair. Dr. Blair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, right. Yeah. You've met him? Yeah. Yes. He sucks. He's super... Sucks. He needs a breath mint. Oh. Yeah. He needs a casket. Kind of killed me. <laughs> well, if not it makes you feel any better, the energy source will eventually kill him. It's not in a refined state. No. It'll not as satisfying as It'll cause degeneration over time, and eventually he'll die. That does make me feel better. Well, what well, is the plan here? Shall we... I can see the concern in your eyes. You're okay. Yeah. That was the main concern of no, infusing no. the Callisto-6 energy source with people. I refined it so it would stabilize. Right. What, what about people, like, slightly out of range of exact contact? They might be in danger. I don't know. I would need blood samples. If it's a small dose, they might be okay. But okay. everything that I've seen um, from the Callisto-6 energy source would indicate, without my refinement, it'll simply cause them to start mutating and die. We, need we may have a patient for you. Yep. Right? Will you come back to our base with yeah. us? That's yes. where we have a lab. Um, yes. Yeah. We can yeah, call no, on the way. Magboard money to get supplies. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of sitting there. I've been living in the mountain this it. whole time, wondering if the world was going to end the next sunrise. You no. said that you erased all, like, the, you know, obviously digital research that you did. Was there any, like, I don't know, hard copies, like on a piece of paper or something, anywhere? It's all up here. Oh, God. I can don't worry. I can recreate all I of it. I still have faith that, you know, future me is still scared of Lacey. You already saved us. You got us her. Okay, we're going to give you enough time to gather all of your belongings in this tiny place. So. She reaches down and picks up her backpack and says, let's Great. go. Okay, good packing. All right. Let's start planning the moon. <laughs> Question, how much of this would you like to get back to a certain someone? We're going to need a lot of infrastructural support if we're going to the moon. Then full briefing is probably required, yes? Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. And we need to Look. get cobalt. Yeah. We're getting a sample as soon as You're f Is this somebody you know? Yeah, one of our friends. He was nearby. Uh, Definitely in the unstable range. But close to six, not five, like... Not five, like snaps. Snaps? No, oh, that's what Synapse, we've been calling him. Is Synapse alive? Oh my God. You see, just she exhales and she goes, is he okay? Well, uh, it's been a while. But you we... saw him, was he still in the lab? Last we saw he was uh, zooming down the 405, that at least was what was reported on Hakeem Sophia. Oh my God, he's not gonna remember why he was running. He could, yeah, be, he actually, could be in Oklahoma right now and have no idea where he was going or coming from. I think we, well, maybe he remembered to turn his recorder on. You gave him a recorder? That, that was the idea. Then he could always go back and watch. Watch the VOD. You see a little bit of emotion come over her for a second and she just exhales and she goes, Luma told me you were good people. Well, she was bragging about herself, that's... She should, she's the best people. I think she was bragging about you guys. That's why we're keeping her Yeah, you're here. welcome, Anton. Future me might be fond of all of you. It's clearly a different you Better universe. keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time for us to mess that up, so... <laughs> <sighs> Let's go to the goddamn moon! As y'all filter Guys, out, she pauses and she goes, um, I'm really sorry about the chest thing. Oh. You are a handsome cyborg. Yeah. What it's worth. No harm, no foul. Some harm. Some yeah, harm. It's fine. I'm good. I walked it off. We'll get you a new shirt. As y'all are filtering out, she turns and looks at you and says, um, Lacey. Yeah. Um, if I give you, if I give you a code, would you be willing to check in on my family? Make sure my wife is okay, my daughter's okay? 
Thank you. Thank you. One by one, y'all filter out of this shack and make your way, saddling up. Um, <clears throat> she notably left her gun behind as she put her backpack on and moved towards uh, the transport. How long have there been this many stars? Oh, for a long time. Cass, I think we're going to see a lot more stars than this soon. Oh, holy shit. This is our ship, Amelia Bedelia. Welcome aboard. Amelia Earhart. Bedelia Earhart. What? <laughs> oh, yes. Amelia uh, Bedelia There's a piece Earhart. of painter's tape just on the inside of Amelia uh, that says Amelia Bedelia Earhart because Cass said so. <laughs> uh, so it almost we, runs out of room at Cass said so and gets a little scrunched. Oh, it says end. all of that? Yeah. 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 Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, just doing a cursory scan of the surround just to make sure we're not surprised. Anything beyond small animals, that sort of thing? Um, Kostji, it, it's still kind of livens your nerves a little bit as you're all moving towards the car because it's just unusual to find someone this important with this kind of information and there's not an ambush or a hit mm. squad that's coming after you guys <laughs> or something but uh, apparently air. apparently her supposed death was a pretty convincing one because as you're moving to the car contrary to every instinct you have as a cybernetic hitman, nothing is happening and nothing happens when you guys saddle up, enter the transport, slide into your car. It is almost unsettling to you that there's not gunfire right now as you slide into your seat. This, the sound of leather cracking and stretching as you sit down, all your weight into the car who, and whoever else is riding with you, sliding into the seat of the car. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is weird, but good, I suppose. Can I grab Cass real quick? Yeah. So, Luma and Oya... Oh, we're not letting that happen. They're our responsible people. We protect them no matter what. Damn right we do. Mm -hmm. oh. I wish you guys could see that. Yeah, in case that was off, that was off of the camera, right? It was a yeah, pinky super promise and then like a head. Forehead. A forehead private moment. Private. Yeah. So. Too private and precious. It was a, it was we'll get pictures after. Yeah, here, we'll reenact it. <laughs> it it, it was, looked exactly it, like this. I'm Lacey. I'm Cass. I punched it. <laughs> I'm Kitty. I'm Kitty. Wow, you guys, I thought I was okay. I'm strong. Damn. I hack. Yeah. <laughs> Tech, forget about it. <laughs> bullshit. Sweet baby, Your sweet baby. Your company is bullshit. <laughs> I love you, sweet baby. This is exactly how it looks. Guys, That's stop it. copying us. <laughs> <laughs> it's rude. Glitter face. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, would you like to follow them back to home base? Yes, I will. I will uh, accompany them. And plus, eight, I don't know if anyone is in sure. the car. So. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely turning the radio is, back. This is where you're all surprised to find that Kashi's car, and maybe it's not that surprising, actually can submerge. But as it begins to fall beneath the waves and follow after Amelia, um, you do see it does create an eerie effect of light bending across the cloak screen because the waves, um, they cause this magnification effect that takes place. So the light rays that are coming down from uh, the, the surface of the water are literally creating, no joke, a, a almost it almost has a prism effect mm. and shines wow. across from it. It just, rea the technology reacting. Light's not shining through, it's just refracting as the water interacts with the tech, causing essentially <laughs> a rainbow car <laughs> as you guys submerge. <laughs> um, still cloaked. Still difficult to see what's going on, but there is that sort of light effect as you um, move over towards uh, Blue Dolphin Base. You get a um, message from Lacey. We're definitely going to need that tech on our moon mission. <laughs> it's critical. The world depends on it. We will see what we can do. <laughs> so, docking at one of the other auxiliary ports, um, you managed to, you, your docking area 
um, being that your car is not necessarily designed to dock, you actually have to dock in the submersible bay, <laughs> which is in the back of the complex. So it has to be drained and then it, you enter, or rather you have to fly, you have to sort of swim into it and then it's closed and drained out. So when you exit your car, the whole place smells like seawater as you're stepping out, just dripping down. Um, <sighs> one by one, you guys all start filtering into Blue Dolphin Base. And as you do, Kotschi, two things you see as you enter this base. One is an extraordinarily large humanoid creature um, standing uh, standing incredibly tall, easily towering over seven feet. Um, taller than B-Dave. <laughs> um, <laughs> bulky good. as hell, wearing a yellow <laughs> raincoat and uh, what looks like sweats that are being stretched to their capacity. Um, lingering at his side with an arm wrapped around his arm while she is fiddling with what looks like a piece of tech, you see a very familiar high-tech cybernetic lethal assassin. Um, <laughs> you know who Oniko is. Oniko was the chief enforcer of Kylan Kraus, head of Pyramid Star Solutions. Um, some some information has been able to filter back that in fact it might have been Fletcher pulling the strings, but you can't confirm that. Um, all you know is that Oniko is a is a living weapon. <laughs> this is the Wolverine of the Callisto 6 universe, and she is death, death, death. And she's sitting there very playfully, just kind of looking at everybody. Dr. Patel, however, upon spotting Oniko, turns two shades wider and no, 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 Meet, hopefully, a good sign and a new variable. Um, Oniko, Dr. Patel. Dr. Patel just eyes her and is like, whoa. She's getting a new name once she picks one. It's, yeah. I just want to say I love your work. Big fan, <laughs> big fan. <laughs> Oniko just looks at you and she kind of looks you up and down for a moment and just kind of, you're the deathless, she signs to you. Hey, yeah, that's me, you see? Yeah. You just see the translation pop up on the bottom of your like cybernetic screen and she, and, uh, she nods and says, I'm familiar with your work. <laughs> <laughs> and then she signs to you, I don't hurt people anymore. Oh. No one's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> she... She exhibits a mannerism that's very similar to Lacey. She kind of dips her head a little bit, looks off to the side and gives a small smile like she's not sure if she should find that funny. <laughs> but it's very similar to a lacy expression and it's and you guys pick up on it. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have also noticed that Oniko has started adopting a bit of the same posture that Sal has when he's walking around. Um, it's, <laughs> while you're all kind of making these observations, Dr. Patel just kind of walks over and she says, um, so I'm not dead right now, so I'm guessing this is okay. And Oniko turns to her and signs, I don't hurt people anymore. And Dr. Patel nods and says, neither do I. Hmm. Beverage of choice. We got a reasonably stocked kitchen. I hope you like pineapple juice. I'll take anything that isn't a nutrition drink. Kashchi walks up to <laughs> Sal and says, someone has been eating their Wheaties. <laughs> coffee. Yes, please. <laughs> coffee. I like this guy. Sal's the best. Like, like Metal Man. <laughs> good, good times. Okay. Well, let's start training for the moon. You guys. <laughs> Pour your drinks. Everyone sits down. Some former enemies, some people back from the dead. 
new information as the scale, the, the immensity of the villain that is before you far out exceeds anything you had imagined. I grab something and go, what does interdimensional mean exactly? Okay, so this is us. This is another dimension. <sighs> That's another dimension. No! That's another dimension. <laughs> and as you guys start going through what you're up against, setting aside the anxieties and fear and focusing instead on how to get the damn job done. That is where we are going to leave off tonight. Ooh. But first, who's captain of this mission? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, not it again. Future me. I nominate the bear. Mark, I, I, I hope, I hope, hope, hope we get to have you back again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is. Always such a genuine pleasure playing with you. Thank, thank you. you, all. Yes, you guys. Thank you. Our enjoyment is deathless. Yay! <laughs> oh um, yeah, so that'll do it. Um, real quick, a, a quick shout out. A thank to our sponsor again, Okie Dokie Dice. Thank you so much for making this as useless as possible. Um, and of course, thank you to our friends at Monty Cook Games. Woo! Um, <gasps> definitely check out their site at uh, montycookgames.com. And I do want to. Once again, give a huge shout out. Thank you so much, Dogmite. This is a rad Yay! stream. I appreciate it. It's great. Um, that'll be it for now. Um, stay tuned. Our One of our most wonderful shows, one of my favorite RPG shows I've ever seen, LA by Night, is up next in an hour. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be a hell of an episode tonight. Yeah. Um, we will see you this time next week. Until then, everyone, stay whimsical. <laughs>